But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. I've been here for seven years. Nothing works here. I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. No shit. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> ah, very good. <laughs> I want that head so sanitary and squared away that the Virgin Mary herself would be proud to go in there and take a dump. Take a dump. Good morning and welcome to the Opie and Anthony program. Hi there. The ONA virus spreading across America thanks to XM Satellite Radio. And it's uh, Whip Em Out Wednesday. It is. Still waiting for the WOW hotline. Waiting and waiting yeah, and waiting like that. There was and supposed waiting. To be a WOW hotline. Seems How like, is that going to work? Seems like a very simple concept. It's kind of like the FU line that we have. Yeah. That the listeners have a lot of fun with when we're not broadcasting. Basically, you know, WOW, whip them out Wednesday. You, you, you have a WOW in your car. There are ladies out there. That will flash you if they see these wows on your vehicle. Beautiful Whether it's a wow bumper sticker or a wow homemade sign. You can get the wow bumper stickers by going to, uh, to our website, opianthony.com. Self-addressed stamped envelope. And we'll send out the wow stickers, right? Really? Well, we don't have time to go to the phones all day long and talk about how you're seeing titties on the highway. Oh, so they call in. To the WOW hotline. That's right. And we pick and choose the best ones. That's right. Ah, and then play them. And we can continue with our funny radio show. And then when we go to break, we have these WOW sightings. So it's a very easy concept, but for some reason, when you work for a, a huge corporation, it takes months and months to actually get that concept uh, working. Got to have a whole new phone line, right? Uh, how hard is that? Oh, my God. Now you're talking very difficult, Opie. How hard is that? that if you got to choose a number... We got the number. What What is it? I don't know. Something like 8664-WOW, I think, or something like that. Oh, boy. Now you're just throwing out a phone number. <laughs> well, I'm going to throw out so some phone numbers. That's not enough numbers. 866. Oh, is 866 like 800? No, yeah. You so it'd have to be 866. Code. And then, right, oh. then the other three numbers, and then 4-WOW. How about like 1-800-866-4-WOW? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Who's getting calls right now? Oh, Customer uh, service. Oh, if we don't get our WOW hotline, I'll be giving out the WOW hotline number. Trust me. Someone's not going to be happy in Washington. <laughs> get it done. Just get it done. <clears throat> yeah. Corporate, uh, the corporate world, very difficult to get things done. Right. We've learned that here. Well, we got like, I don't know, five truckers in a row calling right off the bat. So why don't we go to the phones and say hi to Rich? Rich, what's up? Hey, good morning, lads. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, let you guys know <laughs> the last segment you had yesterday was hilarious. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm we sucked right up until the end of the show, yeah. I guess. Hold on a second. I don't even know what we did. The, uh, you had the dating expert in. Oh, yeah. That's always a joy when you hear that on the radio. <laughs> and Anthony's uh, explaining how to uh, get the 15- or 16-year-old in the back of the truck. <laughs> oh, laughing, that's laughing why the so truckers hard. are calling. Of course. Laughing so hard, I thought I shit my pants. <laughs> I felt a little something squeak out. Oh, God. We were wondering why the truckers were calling. Now it makes perfect sense. Uh, it was the... <laughs> 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 I thought we let her off a little easy, man. We, we could have yeah. got it even worse. I know. She did get off a little easy. you're an expert. How much cock have you sucked? <laughs> she knew everything. <laughs> She knew every friggin' thing but, at 24. But I she, think what a rapist is thinking when he's raping, <laughs> how would the fuck would you know what he's thinking? They've done studies, shut up! Enough yeah. with the done studies crap. Oh. She goes out on dates and right. then writes about it for the magazine. Mm -hmm. And that makes her an expert on everything sexual, relationship-oriented. She knows everything now. Rape. No, robbery. The second you you go into entertainment, you have no credibility as a therapist. Like right. Doctor Phil, all of, he's trying to get laid yeah. off of his fucking psychology <laughs> degree. He doesn't give a shit about you. He wants to get mobbed at the mall. Yeah, if he cared, he wouldn't be on television. Like that. Exactly. Probably, just the the act of being on TV and having a show takes up so much of your time that you couldn't possibly concentrate on being a shrink. 
You know, yeah. like whatever the content of said show is, you can't really pay attention <laughs> to it because the show itself is so much work. Plus, if you look at Dr. <laughs> Phil, he does not look spiritual on no. any le like he doesn't look like a peaceful man he looks like he's a brutal temper looks like a fucking like crooked cop <laughs> he gets mad and his whole head turns all red <laughs> red you know he was like pissed because he went bald at 25 or something so his kids are afraid that anger. of him <laughs> hey uh i gotta interrupt you guys for a second dirty ralph has something dirty, dirty ralph. ralph what's up hey uh that number opie gave you it's not going to work. It's the what? menopause research. <laughs> it is not. 800-8664-WOW? Yeah, I just called it. So just, it. just to see if it was taken. Right. It's the menopause research. Stop it. Try it. Menopause research. All right, can we try that number? It is. is it really? Yeah. Boy, what a Wait, lucky. I don't hear you, bro. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. No, I mean the guys in the Not board. you. Hold on. Yeah, I just called it. It is the menopause hotline. It's the a menopause hotline? Does a girl answer? No, it's a recorded message of a girl. Oh, and let's hear what it's not like suicide where you need it immediately. I think she knew it was right. creeping up on her. <laughs> it's not like you call up and go, what's happening to me? <laughs> the menopause hotline, hold on, you got some time. Yeah, you just get sl slightly drier over, be <laughs> over, over a decade. <laughs> One day you wake up and, went and go, what the hell happened? Buy some uh, KY and please hold. Someone will be with you. All right, that number's taken. You guys want to try another one? How about Bill Berg gives us a number for the WoW hotline? Jesus. What, any number? Uh, I don't know, 1-800. 1-800's good. 944. 944. 1007. Oh. Has nothing to do with WoW. I hate your number. What is it? 1-800? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It has to mean something. All right, what is it? I've, I've never played this game before, Opie. <laughs> you didn't explain it to me. You right. just said, give me your phone number. It's exactly what I did. I don't appreciate the criticism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is it, wait, 1-800-944? Throw a fucking wow in there. Okay. What is that? No, 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 no. What is that? One of your friend's numbers? No, wow. no, 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 no. We'll, we'll go with your original. But what was it again? 944? I don't know. 1007? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 1007. All right. It was so memorable. Can't remember it. But now it could be the number. Yeah. It's so obscure, it could it, it could actually work. I was thinking of making all the oh, numbers now I get it. say something, like aside from 1-800. But what is 1-800-LOOK-WOW? Mm -hmm. How about that? 1-800-LOOK-WOW. Right. Yeah. Okay. Try that one. Try that one, too. Maybe that's not good. 1-800-NICE-TITS. Ooh. Nice tits. So, oh, wait. Nice no, that's tits. one... one too many. Well, that would not. <laughs> nice tip. <laughs> that would not be all right because they'll be driving. You got to have one hand on the wheel. <laughs> all right, I like one eight hundred. Going to see a lot of left breasts. Oh my God. All right, hold on. I like one eight hundred. Nice tip. See now Thanks. you're thinking. Well, now you, you're you thinking. You didn't explain the concept in the war room earlier. Today. Oh Jesus! You get the Sloan Kettering Hospital. <laughs> nice tip. <laughs> That's Olivia Newton-John's uh, home oh, number. <laughs> oh wow! Wow, Awful. that was that was early for that. Oh <laughs> Jesus! Wow. You know, cause she she lost the tit. I'm <laughs> right. Painful. Get it? Ah, uh, let's see. Seventy-eight degrees out. Let's say hi to Russell. <laughs> Russell, what's up, buddy? Hey man, I didn't know you guys were on a delay until you took my phone call. You know, I mean. uh Shit, what are you scared that I, I, I'm going to say something about the Ron and Juice show? What? Wait, 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 sir. What? Uh, I, hey, I'm Russell the Trucker. Hey, Russell. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I'm just calling in to complain about a few things. All right. Here, we I'm take the good, we can take the bad. I'm sitting down here in Birmingham, Alabama. And while that fucking hurricane was was stirring around the, I won't use the N word. Yeah. Uh, while it was stirring around the black folks down there, they forgot all about that girl in uh, Aruba, you know. And they let they let every one of them fucking cock lickers go, <laughs> every fucking one of them. Now I just want to know what do we have to this say is about that? For real. And tell me because. uh Sir, I am a very, I, I, just because I'm a trucker doesn't mean I'm not intelligent. Are you not uh, no, serious? Your grades in high school that determine <laughs> that. Are you really serious here, sir, or is this some kind of a joke? Because hey, you're I, doing a good job of acting. If it's a joke, I'm, I'm trying to talk to you. What is this, a Ron and Juice show? 
We heard that the first time, sir. The Ron and Jizz show. It's Ron and Fez, and they're on after us. But uh, oh, I thought it was I think Ron we, and Jizz. I think we I'm spent sad. enough time on the Aruba girl. That that uh, story's over. Well, they, they let those cock suckers go. They, you know goddamn good and well that they... Uh, excuse my language about you're using the Lord's name of vain and things, but we are on, uh, what do we call it, radio, and... uh can, can we just get down to business here? He doesn't yeah, let's get down Lord's to brass name. tacks. Come on, man. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. come on. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Yeah, talking about America. You know, you know damn well there's a whole bunch of Indians out there right next to the ocean. I'm not sure exactly Indians? where that freaking place is at, but, you know. Uh, yeah. Somebody took that girl and they they butt raped her. That's right. And, and, and she's <laughs> out butt in the ocean, uh, you know. Getting getting raped again by a shark. And I, I, Holy I, I, Jesus, <laughs> Palomino! Uh, this is too funny to be real, it, right? This, this guy can, the, that I can call in and, and really talk about uh, exactly what uh, I, I can't figure the out. issues of the day. Yeah, I can't figure out who Opie is and who Anthony is, but I listen to you guys every day, and uh, I just don't know. Let's get down to the brass tacks. <laughs> All right, we're getting <laughs> brass tacks. I think we're there. How about you make your point, sir? Come on, Ross. Yeah, what's well, your well, point? Well, well, uh, what's the world coming <laughs> well, to? What's the world coming to? I'm talking about uh, Billy Graham. You yeah. know, I just really want to know what in the hell is going on here. What do you think the problem with America is today, sir? Well, I think the problem with America... Uh, Murray. Uh, you know what? That's a large question right there. <laughs> it's a we'll large try to question. simplify it for us. Yeah. Uh, I think everybody in America is just stone cold fucking retarded. Is that you it? And, and 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 there's no back tax there. You don't even need to pause some shit there. The what? You know, these fucking mentally retarded motherfuckers need to go fucking. You know what I mean? Shit. But wow. you know what? The people that left those old folks in that nursing home to drown, they need to be commended. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what. Yeah. Too many fucking assholes in this world that need to die. And So uh, let's start with the old ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like and, that Army Navy store guy in Falling Down. Remember the uh, guy that was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what he's like. I'm like you, man. man. I'm just like you. <laughs> He's starting to make a little sense, though. Yeah. Why go uh, after the uh, the people in the in the nursing homes, uh, Russell? <laughs> hey, hey, you want to know what? Jack Kaborkian is one of my best fucking friends. I did nursing for fifteen fucking years before I became a truck driver. This now makes sure even I more sense. How many smothered faces did he leave in in the beds when he walked out of the room? Yeah, they just oh, died of old age. There's more than one pillow that I'd fucking like to shove over somebody's face. Did you ever suffocate uh, any of your patients? He, he runs out of breath yeah, after every to. sentence. You wanted, wanted to? to? Yeah. You, you ever didn't turn? To. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I'd like to stick my middle finger up some family member's ass and smother some fucking patients. You know what I'm saying? We understand what you're saying. You never uh, turned up their medication a little too high and let them just uh, drift away? I was too busy taking the medication, just trying to deal with the cocksuckers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. What do you think we should do about the uh, population problem? Uh, you know, uh, there, there's certain areas that we, we, we should just think about. Uh, dropping bombs on. I bet I know those areas. <laughs> over, and that fucking New Orleans is one of them. And it, it seems like we've had a natural, it seems like God has go, gone ahead and took care of that for us. You know? But, uh, you know, there, there, there's a whole lot of other problems in this world that I would like to get to. Let's and, get to them. Yeah. Uh, but, God darn it, you, you, you know, uh, you, you caught me off guard. My brain is going blank I because uh, I didn't even think you'd answer my phone call. But, uh, you know, there, there, there's other issues in this world. What about uh, teen pregnancy? Yeah, what about teen pregnancy? Oh, shit, I'd like to get every one of them pregnant and fucking have them, ha ha have them go down to the abortion clinic. 
You know? Get them pregnant and then take them down to the abortion <laughs> clinic. I got gotcha. you. That solves the condom problem. Yeah. Oh, my God, especially if they got big, nice, firm kits <laughs> right. that, that are juicy and great for whip them out Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this guy's a... All right, Russell. All right, Russell. We're going to let you go for now, all right? Uh, hey, I love you guys. And, and tell Jimmy that I've got the juicy one that he likes right here between my legs. And tell Jimmy I love him. All right. Thank you, Russell. Bye. There he goes, Russell. A lot Russell. of people are saying he should get a golden ticket. I think he should get a golden ticket. Jesus. New bit on the show. Five minutes with Russell. I think he, I like he, he kept running out of breath at the end of the sentence. Yeah. Yeah. I hate those. That's a fucking thing. Wow, man. Let's go to Chuck. Chuck, what's up? Yeah, guys. Hey. I, just want to say I love the show. Um, I apologize about that last fucking trucker. <laughs> no, I um, loved him, man. Yeah, he, was <laughs> he was good. That's the shit we'll um, be talking about today after the show's over. How about for your wow line, 866 wow show? Wow show? Ah, yeah. wow show. All right. What else you got? Was that uh, what you wanted to say? Well, mainly I just wanted to say I love the show. I've had XM for about a week. and A week? You guys are the highlight of, the, of me uh, having this damn time. Dude, you've missed so much. You have no I idea. I know. <laughs> Where have you been? We've been here uh, almost a year. Well, our old, know, shows, I, I, our old shows are available on audible.com. All right. All right, Chuck. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks, guys. How many new listeners are we getting a day? Probably uh, 10. You think 10? Yeah, but every day it adds up. 12, you know? maybe? maybe? A dozen? Maybe 10 to 12 a day. <laughs> think about it, though. Now people are going to write on the message board, you hear Opie say they only get 10 listeners a day? New listeners. We, new listeners. We already have well over a million. Yeah. And then we're doing about 100 a week, 100 new listeners a week. That adds up fast if you think about it. I think it's more. How much? It's I'm saying more. It's like 70 a week. 70 a week. I think we get more than 10 a day. 280 a month. Think of all the people cruising around. They're and all of a sudden they just radio, become a, f a fan of the show. And they land here and uh, have to listen. It's something completely different than whatever else you're tuning into on XM. I want to hear from people that turned into fans yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday. Well, that guy it took a week to but become the, a huge fan. But going with your logic, people are being turned on every day. You know that guy does not know who little Jimmy Norton is? <laughs> He's a huge fan of our show now. Has no clue who little Jimmy Norton is. Because Jimmy's been gone a week. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. All right. There are people that are fans of this show that have no clue. They think it's Opie, Anthony, and Bill. <laughs> That's it. They're like, yeah, he's kind of funny. He's not perverted enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got a transvestite every once in a while. <laughs> you should just do a transvestite thing. What the hell? No. Just yeah, a, just, just a goof. jump in. Just as a goof. Just a goof. Tell yeah, people you, yeah. you like uh, hookers to piss on you. Oh, shit like that. You yeah, can't even fake that, right? No. That's like the, there's a there's a real uh, bad badly organized uh, porn store about three blocks down from me. You know how yeah. usually they have the way they set up the porn is they gradually get more and more psychotic. Right. This is one where I don't know. It was like ten people just grabbed tapes and just stuck them. In. So you literally go from something like, oh, that's too lame. That's not going to do anything to literally people shitting on people. You're like, <laughs> so it's just like, oh, yeah, it's kind of, ah! and then you go, yeah. oh, look at that Puerto Rican, and then there's some dude sucking a cock. Yeah. Like, oh my, God. can we have a fucking aisle? Because in most porn stores, they have that aisle. Like, you just fucking turn the corner, like, oh, that wall. You just start yeah. seeing people tied up and gagged and shit, and you're like, yeah, all right. With shit on their foreheads. Yeah. I've been there. It's like... Yeah, German titles to the videos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Das Bute. Das Dumper. Yeah. They, uh. God, you make a great point. You have to have the slow fade. Yeah, you get this exactly. Into oblivion. The, uh, the old mom and pop video stores, uh, used to have the porno section in them when you used to rent, and it was the beads. You know, everyone's seen that, and you'd have to walk in there. And you'd usually end up going in there with your friends. You get an afternoon, you want to rent, uh, porno. And, uh, if you'd, uh, you've ever made that error, of turning the corner and ending up in front of the gay section, oh. your friends just don't. You know, what are you looking at? Hey, faggot! You want to you want to rent the cocksucker video? Go rent that one, faggot. <laughs> yeah, I was browsing, right? Oh, it's, like I knew it was it's coming. It's horrific. It is. It just comes out of nowhere. Some dude with his legs behind his neck. Oh, and just like ah! Big ass exposed. And, oh, what happened? How did I get here? 
I was just looking you at the You had the, the beads in my my town. They had like the wooden shut those the wooden oh, shutters, the saloon oh, yeah. doors, the yeah, saloon yeah. doors. They sure. barely even covered you. Like they could still you could see like from your knees down and your whole head. You could see, <laughs> right. There was no privacy. Nice for the privacy. Yeah. yeah. And you never <laughs> wanted to make a beeline for that section either. Yeah. You're kind of mm, fried green tomatoes. Start yeah. humming to yourself and whistling. Bridges and in Madison County. The ne- no, the negotiator, Sam Jackson. Is good. <laughs> right. right, and then you make that yeah. quick step into there. <laughs> yeah, and they hear the beads. <laughs> Everyone turns and looks. <laughs> or the door. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> the pervert just went into that section. I think DVDs are much more uh, sanitary, they seem. Yeah. Those uh, videotapes were nasty. Yeah, and they never had the tapes in the box, so you had to bring that huge box over to the <laughs> cash register with, like, hardcore porno pictures on <laughs> The box is, like, three feet by five feet, and you right, right bring right. it over to the desk. A huge picture on it. I'd like this one, please. <laughs> right. Although other ones where they have, like, 18 pictures of, like, every fucking possible position. Yeah, the whole movie is at frame by frame on the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good choice. You're going to rent ass rammers. Yeah, I like that one. I go to a porn store about once every like six months, and uh, I always go by and I always look at that Max Hardcore section, because he was a guy like he was one of those guys. He went over the edge for me about 18 tapes ago. Yeah. So I like just picking up the box and seeing like what extra level of fucked upness he's added. And he, you know he already had like those those things where he would s- stick things into like their pussy that like held them open. Oh I, right. I didn't right. know what it was. It was like. Some gynecological yeah. tool. So now the last one I saw, he's literally busting a nut in this girl's face, and it's not, he smears the lipstick all over. They look like not even human. And then he's got this thing where he holds their head, and he takes his thumb and lifts like one of their eyelids up like a little bit higher, so oh. they they almost look like a, like a fucking zombie. Oh Jesus! <laughs> it's it's horrific. That is horrible. Beyond the point of help. <laughs> yeah, and, and do you do you watch these or you just? No, I uh, last last one I I got of his was uh, well, actually no, I'll I'll rent the ones that b- before he went off into the abyss. <laughs> at least at least my line was just like I can't follow you in there. I don't like the violent stuff though. Like I don't like slap happy. It's it's funny like for a few seconds, and then it just gets like oh. oh, they're smacking the girl in the face and gagging her with the cock, and her yeah. eyes are. But like two beats because so much jizz is in her eyes that they're stinging. It's all red. You got a red eye. Red eye. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Call me a romantic. <laughs> yeah, that stuff uh, doesn't quite do it. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. How do we get? Too. How do we get here? Uh, no, never know. Ah, thanks, Russell. Uh, never know how we get there. Actually, you know what? I, I wanted to do this a couple days ago. Uh, Bill Burns Studio. Filling in for Jim Norton and doing a great, great job. Uh, Jimmy called me while I was having steak with Super Agent Bob Eatman last night. You did lunch and dinner with Bob? Bless you. That's two free meals. Saint Opie. Two free meals. Yeah. I went to Bobby Van's, a great steak place, with uh, with uh, Robert Eatman's brother there. What could you possibly discuss that we didn't discuss during lunch? Uh, well, no, see... The lunch was the business meeting, yeah. the business lunch, and then dinner is just the the social social time. Yeah, but it's with Bob. Catch up on our personal lives. Ugh. <laughs> but the steak was good. Yeah. So Jimmy called, and I'm like, Jimmy, I can't talk to you. I'm at dinner with uh, Robert Eatman, you know, super agent Bob Eatman and his brother, Russ. And uh, Jimmy goes, what's the name of the place? Um, I can't even say the word. Mausoleums. Mausoleums. <laughs> so I start laughing really loud, and I just turn to Bob and I go, uh, "Jimmy says hi from L.A." <laughs> Jimmy's been in that situation. These guys are bore. They yeah, are it's bore. It, you. You just sit there at dinner, and you know it's your agent. You got to hang out with him every so often to, just to catch up on business. But um, and he was the agent of that girl here yesterday. Going on? No, no, no he was no. the agent. Uh, is he is he really representing Laszlo now? I think so, yeah. Is he, yeah? He represents everybody in radio. Yeah. He's like the radio guy. It's uh he represents us, Ron and Fez, Laszlo. Mm, yeah. Scott Farrell, I think. Oh, all right, cuz I was literally sitting there. What kind if he knew you guys, why would he put her in here? No, no, no he no, had nothing okay. to do with that. No, he doesn't. That mess. Yeah, we don't do it. <laughs> do that type of thing. Dude, is it really hot in here or what? No. Seriously? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Really? Fine and dandy. God, I am sweating like a pig Uh-oh. today. You per- are you percolating? No, I'm fine Sometimes today. you get those sweats. <laughs> no, I already had the... Uh, those the- are the worst when your legs go out on you. 
You ever get just the pain in the back of your thighs? It's so bad, your stomach hurts. Ow. In between your nipples and your kneecaps, it hurt. <laughs> oh, I am sweating like a pig. Right yeah. Now. You hot in here? A little. You are. Oh, Dan, right? stop kissing ass. Yeah, you are the... not. No, he never yes, kisses. Yes, boss. I swear to God, he never kisses ass. Nathaniel's not like that. No. Are, are you hot or not? No. I'm a little warm. It's a no. little warm in here. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. What I wanted to do was play the Bill Burr Ozfest PSAs. Yes. This stuff was really, really funny. Uh, Bill Burr went to Ozfest with, uh, you know, Martini Steve, Hybrid Steve, Steve the Bear. What else is he called these days? Dan's fanning himself. He just started fanning himself like he's hot. You're not hot? It's definitely hot in here. It's there's fine no, over there's here. There's no passion. No. Was yes, him? I am. He wasn't am. selling it. Oh. It's hot. <laughs> We could like, air conditioning. Come on, <laughs> Danny. We could clear all the phone says lines. It's too. hot. All right. Here's Bill Burr doing um, some stuff for us at Ozfest. No, yeah. he went down there with Steve. <laughs> Come on, they'll play that. <laughs> and, Come on, uh, the air conditioner. And oh. <laughs> Bill had access to a lot of. Um, no name bands, basically. Oh, Ooh. come on! No name bands. <laughs> <laughs> That's the extent of my my Ray Romano impression. I just go, I love oh, it though. come on! <laughs> yeah, uh, you're afraid to jump further because then you might lose it. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got it down with two so, words. Yeah. That's so true. <laughs> oh, come impression. on! Right. And then you try to talk, and it winds up sounding like Kermit. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> just keep it there, and you're yeah. perfect. So uh, Bill decided to have some fun with these kind of no name bands. And uh, he talked to a band called A Dozen Furies and made him do, like, um, a fake PSA for the Opie and Anthony program. Imagine being A Dozen Furies and listening to the show. You're all excited. Oh, they're finally doing the interviews. They've been talking about it for a week. And Opie gets on and goes, yeah, some no-name bands. <laughs> they just sit there and go. <sighs> we have a lot of guys that work for us Yeah. in uh, the demo. Uh huh. In the demo that uh, A Dozen Furies is trying to... To hit, right? Yep. Does anybody know A Dozen Furies? The band A Dozen Furies? Yes, gentlemen. Everyone's shaking their head now. Big fans. No? No one? No one knows. No. I'm not saying they aren't a no-name band. I'm just saying they probably don't consider themselves a no-name band. If they've played OzFest, they're probably like, we're rocking, we're rolling. All right. Uh oh, whoa. Oh, hey. hey, Travis. Who played that music? Oh, wow. He got you. Wow. E-Rock just fucked up Derek's whole day with that one. He walked in the studio and then walked right out. Derek loves that bit, too. He came up with it. Yep. He came up with the uh, Eric ha having walk-on music. There he is. There you go. <laughs> it's such a glutton for punishment. And now Eric leaves. Eric has walk-on music. Now, Travis, Wow. This is a big chance you're taking here. You're telling me. You know of uh, that band. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they yeah, were the, the band, band that I forgot the name of already. A Dozen Furies. A Dozen Furies. I'm pretty sure they were the band that won the Battle for Ozfest show on MTV. Oh, really? I, uh, and what does that mean? I did not know that. <laughs> there were a bunch of other no-name bands, and they were the best no-name band? Exactly. Oh. Yeah. He's getting really good at that. Hey, Steve. Comes hey, right in. No, I was I didn't realize Travis was in here, but uh, uh, the uh, go ahead say what we just heard. <laughs> Motherfucker! This guy, I'm he's actually the alert. Definition of Mike fright. Yeah, what? he just freezes up. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I get in here and all eyeballs point on me, and I tense up like that. I don't know what it is. He's he closes crazy. his eyes and tries to gather his thoughts. I do. Uh, a dozen Furies was the band that won Battle for Ozfest, yes. so they got the uh, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. And they're on. Uh, Isn't Sanctuary. that what Travis just said? Yeah, it is. But yeah. I, I walked in here just as he was saying it. So I'm well, like, oh, no, no shit. shit. <laughs> 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 all right, so it's a popular band. Uh, yeah, in that uh, in that uh, Ozfest click, yeah, and the no thing. name band community. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> you can get out of here fast He's enough. Fleeing. <laughs> so Bill Bird talked to a dozen Furies and had him do a fake PSA for the Opie and Anthony program. All right, what's up? It's uh, Bill Bird. I'm standing here with uh, the guys from a uh, dozen Furies. 
Hey, we're doing a skin cancer awareness thing here on uh, Opie and Anthony. So if you guys could just say something to make you know the kids aware about skin cancer, just wing it, anything. Throw a couple of fucks in there so the kids will listen to it, you know? Uh, dude, I, we are out in the sun all day long, every day, and we put on sunblock probably like five times throughout the day, man. You know, you got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of your skin. Start over again. Just throw a couple of fucks in there. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, they're crazy uh, over there. Man, we're Start over again. All right, just say for, you know, skin cancer awareness. All right, man. We're <laughs> fucking cock fags, and uh, we put on a lot of sunblock. Fuck. Uh, yeah. We're out in the fucking sun all day long, man. It's just fucking beats down on you, and you know, dude, you gotta fucking take care of it, dude. You gotta wear sunblock, gotta wear it over and over again. Especially you wanna keep the tattoos That's fresh, dude. You need to tighten it up. That's, just, just tighten it up real quick. Just real quick. Wear your fucking sunblock. Sunblock, bitches. <laughs> all right, guys. I love Sons that. The bitches. <laughs> You're gonna have to do this again for us, man. It's too good. It's just oh, yeah. too good. <laughs> Trying to be all hip and cool about it. The next, the next no-name band yeah, man. that Bill Burr talked to was Shadows Fall. Oh, Shadows Fall. Anyone? Shadows Fall? <laughs> yeah. I just picked up their um, new uh, EP. I did on, uh, nothing. Picked up nothing from them. I have no idea who they are. No one's coming forward. No one around here knows Shadows Fall. Their website looks just like the last band's website. <laughs> like band just popped it up. I'm like, what? Same website. All right, well, Bill Burr made these guys do a fake PSA as well. Yo, what's up? It's Bill Burr, Open Anthony Show. I'm talking to Brian Fair from Shadows Fall. Great set, man. How'd you feel about it? Oh, it's been awesome, man. The whole Ozfest is just incredible, man. You know, sharing a stage with Maiden and Sabbath doesn't get any better than that. Let me ask you this. How the hell do you sing like that for so long? I mean, I yelled at my dad like that for about 20 minutes one time. I couldn't yeah, talk with three Yeah, I'm used to it for yelling at my girlfriend that much. You know, so, you know, it builds it up. You're going to build the strength, you know? <laughs> well, you know what? We're going to do that drop right now. You know what's good? You're glad you brought that up. We had uh, Open Anthony's doing like a, a thing for like domestic violence awareness. <laughs> yeah, somebody kicked the shit out of their girlfriend in like Newark or something. So, oh, shit. Yeah, so just 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 ad lib some sort of drop and uh, not do domestic violence to your girlfriend or whatever. And, uh, and you know, it's kind of weird, but toss a couple of F bombs in there just because our, our listeners are retarded. So. <laughs> but just try to keep the good message. So just say there's private shadows ball and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, just don't beat up your girlfriend. And just, you know, fucking don't beat up your girlfriend or something like that. What's up? This is Brian from Shadows Ball. Man, you gotta stop punching your girlfriend out there. Save that shit for the bedroom. You know, that's where it's at, but you know, don't take it to the streets. <laughs> okay, do it again. Uh, just throw like one fuck in there. Right. I swear to God, they're idiots. Right. <laughs> What's up, this is Brian from Shadows Fall. Just say, stop hitting your fucking girlfriend, you idiots. Alright, save the violence for the bedroom. Alright, cool. Alright, man. <laughs> you save the violence for the bedroom angle that he took on that. He liked it so much the first time, he had to uh, incorporate it into his second attempt. Yeah, I didn't even get that. Because Bill wasn't happy with his first one. <laughs> I love that. They do it, and it's probably all uncomfortable, and then he makes them do it again. <laughs> few, tighten it up. Tighten it up. Tighten, tighten it up. That's stunk. Talking about domestic violence here, sir. And finally, Bill talked to another band at OzFest named In Flames. Oh. And had them do a PSA as well. Listen to this. Hey, what's up? It's Bill Burr, Opie and Anthony Show. You know that because you're listening to this shit. Uh, I'm with the bass player from In Flames, Peter Iwers. So how do you think your set's going to go tonight? You looking forward? Are you on the main stage? Yeah. Are you, are you over there? Yeah, I think it's going to go great. I mean, it's uh, we always put in 150% and, you know, it's a bit different playing from a, sit for a sitting down crowd, but still it's going to be great. So far, all the shows have been amazing, so... I'm pretty sure today will be as well. Listen, man, we're also doing, uh, this is kind of a side thing. We're kind of doing this uh, this benefit. Somebody beat up a special needs kid in, like, Newark. And uh, so we just want you to just say, you know, just give a shout-out to the kids so they know not to beat up somebody with, like, you know, special needs, you know. So just, you know, just say, like, uh, you know, hey, guys, you know, it's not cool to beat up with somebody just because they're different or whatever, you know. Just, you know, just like a quick kind of, like, uh, okay. like a sound bite. And it's kind of weird, but throw a couple of, you know, fucks in there just because our, our fans are kind of retarded, you know what I mean? So you need to, like, just make them, like, rock and roll, you know? Yeah, sure. So just wing it. Hey, guys. Uh, this is Peter Brune Flames. You should treat everybody equally and uh, don't beat anybody up or do something bad to them just because they're different. Everybody's the same. Man. Okay, that's totally the perfect vibe. Just throw in special needs and throw in, like, one or two fucks. The F, yeah, the F word. Yeah, this is it's, it's kind of, like I said, they're retarded. Uh, same thing again, or what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, this is Peter from Flames. Uh, treat everybody the same way, even pe people who have special needs and everything like that. Oh. Don't fucking go and, uh, and do any bullshit and start beating people up because they're different. Treat everybody the same, dude. 
That's beautiful. Dude. And the kid's name is Russell. Just give him a shout out. Same thing. A couple of fucks. He's a big metal fan, so it mean a lot to him. That's the kid who got beat up, Russell from Newark. <laughs> hey, Russell, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, sorry you can't be here today, and just take care of yourself, man. See you soon. All right, dude, that's beautiful, man. Thank you so much, and good luck tonight. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I love this bit. You just throw a mic in front of someone, and they do whatever you, you tell them to, no matter how ridiculous. <laughs> No, I just kept looking back at Steve, like, did, did we get the audio? Like, maybe oh, yeah. some fucking band playing in the yeah. background. <laughs> you know? We get that? We get it? <laughs> I love these special needs, and then, yeah, our listeners are fucking retarded. Yeah, they totally don't. <laughs> you use the derogatory term for special needs children. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, no one picked up on that. No one turned to you and just said, oh, you're fucking idiot. I am not doing this. You cannot be serious. I felt bad for that last guy because he was, you know, he's European, so he's speaking a second language. I mean, I, oh, yeah. they, could, they could get me to say anything in Belgium. <laughs> he tops you right there. Yeah. Very, very funny. All right. We're going to take our first break. What's with Imus today? Huh. Imus looks like someone mixed up color forms. You got like the cowboy set with the businessman set. He's wearing a suit jacket, like a blazer and a pink shirt with his old brown cowboy hat. It doesn't. That look was in, in like 1982. When, like, is that, a, that it? Movie Urban Cowboy. Yeah, came Urban out. Cowboy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's it's a, a suit jacket, and a uh, red and white, a Johnny Rockets shirt. Johnny Rockets <laughs> <laughs> shirt, and then the old. It's not even like his dress cowboy hat. Right. Like there should be. He should have the bolo tie, like they wear in Texas, with a big piece of turquoise and a silver, <laughs> and, and then the the nice yeah. maybe uh, nice felt hat. He's got his working man's hat on. Looks like one of those things where it's a face and you spin a wheel and the hats change and the coats change like a little kid's toy. And he mixed it up and put the businessman attire with the cowboy attire. It just looks... It looks uh, stupid. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Just one. That's just all I got. I got one thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right. I got to write jokes. <laughs> My act will be over in three minutes. <laughs> just got like impression. Just a mile. No, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this guy's? Uh, Don Imus. Don Imus. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep this show going. <laughs> You're ready for your next act. <laughs> Run it to the stage, <laughs> Russell. Hey man. Uh oh. Your show says a whole lot of cocks. Oh. Uh, let, 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 let me tell you something. All right. You know, you, the first thing you need to do is get rid of that goddamn, uh, what do you call it, uh, two-minute delay. You know, because uh, I can't even talk and listen on the radio at the same time. My dog wants to fucking bite your ass. What? And, uh, <laughs> and let, 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 me, let me tell you something. You know, in order to do a good radio show, you oh. need to wake up in the morning and at least read the motherfucking newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Elo? You folks have no idea uh, uh, of what you're doing. You know, and, and I love you guys, man. I just say every morning. We have no I, I idea what we're doing. I the left side of my fucking window, man. All right, Russell, uh, Russell, how about, you, how about you do the news for us today? Oh, shit. Bring it on. Well, what's, uh, on, what's in the news today? Oh, uh. I'll, uh, give, that, I'll, give, I'll give you some thought starters. How about her? Wait a minute. Oh, Tell you what's on the news. Oh, you today. don't need a thought. All right, let's go. I don't need to read the fucking newspaper. You know what? There's a whole lot of people out there. It takes them uh, a whole lot of time to read the newspaper. And I, I'll just goddamn tell you one thing: that uh, you know, there, 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 there's a problem. There's a problem out there in this United States of America. It's stalling. And uh, Russell, they, did, they got blown away. I, I'm sorry, there's so many black people out there. You know, but that's not a white problem. You know, but let me tell you something. Oh, wow. Uh, well, they, they moved over into Houston and shit like that, and now the tornado is coming right directly the towards The tornado. Yeah. I, I, I'm having a bad problem and, and thinking that maybe they might need to uh, move over to the Arizona Dome, you know. The Arizona because, Dome? Uh, yeah, because... Uh, you know, for some reason, the good Lord has sent these hurricanes around here, and uh -huh. it's not uh -huh. good for them. Yeah, around so, here. Yeah. No, 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 no. 
What hey, we've got here, here is failure to communicate. Hey, you know, you know, Russell, are you trying to say that the hurricane is now going after the people that left Louisiana, New Orleans? Yeah, and it doesn't matter if they're black or white. You know, but but let me tell you something. Why is God mad at those people and sending hurricanes after them? Well, uh, geez, I don't know. He, he's just a guy that really doesn't like queers or black. <laughs> <laughs> so God doesn't like queers or blacks, so he's sending to uh, down tornadoes. kind of guy. I, Hurricanes. I know, I know yeah. Opie, uh, Opie just really despises the good Lord. But you know what? He's got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, All right, Russell. All right, Russell. We're going to let you go. What? You don't let me know more? What? I'll fucking send a hurricane out to your ass, too. I'll it out. All right, there he goes, Russell the trucker. Wow. His laugh sounded like Norton imitating Ben. <laughs> 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 All right, God we'll talk damn. about Hurricane Rita when we get back, I guess, and other things. And we got to get into this Harry and Nathaniel challenge. Yeah, I was hearing a little of this on uh, Ron and Fez yesterday. So you're going to have to fill me in. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. All I know is there's yeah. a lot of excitement yeah. around the XM studios here today. What? <laughs> Harry and Nathaniel are going to have what? A, a laugh off or something? All right, we'll get into the details <laughs> next. All right, we're back with the Opie and Anthony program. Bill Burr sitting in today, once again, doing a great job. Go to his website, BillBurr.com. Uh, .com. You got the or .com. Or MySpace. Or MySpace. Very nice. Damn. Hurricane Rita. Yep. Just. Keeping uh, tabs on it on the news, are you? It's going to hit, uh, what, Galveston? It's another biggie. Cat. Cat 4, as they say now. Used to be category, but now we've had so many uh, hurricanes this season but in the news all the time that now they're just calling it Cat 4. Cat 4. Category uh, 4. Very dangerous storm. It's in the Gulf now. That's a hip weatherman. Yeah. Cat 4. We're I'm, talking I'm Cat out. 4 here. I guess that God thing's not working out for uh, President Bush, huh? Talks to him on a daily basis. He loves the God thing. He talks about God all the time in his speeches <laughs> and when he's uh, setting policies and all that. A Christian. How does that work that the people that were in New Orleans, uh, they get hit by the hurricane. Uh, they're displaced. A lot of them go to Texas, Houston, Galveston, wherever they are over there on the Texas coast of the Gulf. They go there. They've been praying. They have been asking God for help. Not only... Does God not help them? <laughs> right. <laughs> but he sends another hurricane right a, at him. He sends another motherfucker right at Another <laughs> huge... Let's just call it another motherfucker. Motherfucker. <laughs> right <laughs> at him. <laughs> right at where they went. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Yeah, you, you keep going to your churches. Have fun. I'm bailing at this point. I don't believe It's shit. not even like he didn't help, but at least... He's keeping the status quo. We can, you know. You gotta pray to Satan now, like sacrifice a you, lamb. You or do. Something. Right. Pentagrams all over the place. Just it, because for some reason it's not working. He is not only not helping. Now he's kind of having fun with you he guys. He sent another motherfucker. Motherfucker. He's kind of goofing on you now. You're praying. You're asking for help. He just. What does he do? Does he spin his hand? What's the act that he does to make one of those hurricanes? Woo! Like he's bowling. He puts a little English <laughs> on it. And there it goes across the Gulf. Yeah. yeah, everybody took off. It's like the 710 split right now. Yeah, now it's a 710 split. What do I hit? I hit New Orleans again. Do I hit where they went? No, you hit yeah. Houston and you knock it into if they went up to Little Rock. Oh, right. Yeah, you kind of curve it around yeah. the coast a little, you're little gonna, English. It's going to clip Houston in the Astrodome <laughs> and like send a, it shooting up. <laughs> like a pro when you think yeah. it's going to go in the gutter and it just stops and then hooks and goes strike. Right. He's fucking around. He's got a blindfold on. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> trick shot. He's going to toss this. Watch this. Watch I think, this. I think it just shows he has a sense of humor. Because, <laughs> I mean, you got to start laughing at this crap. This is a huge storm. Another a one. Cat 4, as Ant said. Cat 4. I think he's repeating himself. Yeah. He, he did it last year in Florida. Yeah. And now he's uh, he's, do he's doing it. It's a copycat. This is like, yeah, the sophomore jinx. <laughs> More of the same. So are, are all those <laughs> yeah. two stars. You're reviewing his yeah. hurricane and just thinking it's a, a pale uh, comparison to the first one. Are all these people now bailing out of Houston? Um, they have uh, ordered some voluntary evacuations. I hear, though, by maybe later today or tomorrow, there will start being mandatory evacuations. A lot of people are very critical of the five-day hurricane track. 
I heard this on the news yesterday. People are saying it panics a lot of people. Uh, they really aren't sure within five days where exactly this thing's going to turn up. And it kind of gets people that it gives them that cry wolf syndrome where uh, they look at the five day. It says it's coming toward you. And then it really doesn't. And they go, oh, look at the news again, scaring everybody. But it only moves just a little bit. It all depends on we what happens. We knew it was going to hit New Orleans like five days out. No, they didn't. They oh They really didn't. They said... It might, and it probably will, but if something happens in the Gulf, if another storm pops up somewhere, or a low pressure or high pressure forms somewhere, that's what steers those things. That bumps them around, and uh, it could turn them one way or the other. That's why they can't defin If they definitely knew, they would evacuate, like, immediately. Yeah. This is definitely coming here. Get the fuck out. Well, they're reeling us all in again, man, because I'm watching, I'm watching Fox and they're MSNBC. I'm just... I'm just waiting. Yeah. He's showing it in like real time. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I'm it's frustrated because the real thing, time. the thing, they slow these fucking things. Yeah. The move. thing uh, moves what, 15 miles an hour yeah. or something like, like that. Like 12 miles an 12, hour or something like an that. Hour. Yeah. If you had a bike, you could stay, you could stay ahead of it. You could definitely outrun you'd it. A, you'd have a tailwind <laughs> just pushing you along. <laughs> you could outrun it. Well, we got uh, some audio coming in. Let's listen to what the Today Show has on Rita. As the president again checked on recovery efforts in New Orleans and South Mississippi, oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico were being evacuated. In the port of New Orleans, Marines were recalled to the Iwo Jima supporting the Katrina recovery effort. It will ship out for now. And the infamous convention center was being cleaned should it be needed as a medical shelter. We are completely aware <laughs> of the potential dangers that we would face if the storm ventures toward the eastern side of Texas. New Orleans can't take much bad weather. In addition to a damaged infrastructure, New Orleans levees, though patched up, are severely weakened. Right now, weakest link is still the place where we did the, uh, uh, the patches. Uh, we estimate right now that that could withstand maybe five-foot uh, surges. Officials have put a steel barrier over the entrance of a canal whose levees broke flooding the city of New Orleans. But, Matt, there's nothing anyone can do about the rain, even if they get only a portion of Rita. Even a little bit of rain here could have a devastating effect Devastate. to an area which has already been hit hard. You did a cannonball into the Gulf of Mexico. You could flood that whole fucking city. <laughs> <laughs> One of those guys Again. falls off the oil rig. It's going to send this little ripple of people. No! <laughs> <laughs> the levees. It, uh, they, they pretty much just got the whole place pumped out, too. They're, uh, a lot faster than they originally thought. Oh, they were the talking way. six months underwater. It took two and a half weeks. weeks. Two and a half two weeks. weeks. They're pumping it out. It's all pumped out. And uh, this thing could just flood it again. And Bush is just, he, he's looking frazzled. What'd I do? He's just, what happened? He just keeps going down there and taking a look. You think he's doing that? <sighs> yeah, <they're> just <laughs> kind of looking around like, <sighs> where do I start? It's not a brush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not to be clear here. But we're going to rebuild. <sighs> he does nothing. He was down there yesterday. They all over the news. I watched again. He gives a speech, a rah rah speech about how uh, they're going to rebuild and send money down there. And every, it's something he could have done from uh, Washington. But he flies down there. We're going to send funds down to the people who need to be funded. <laughs> yeah. He gets like one word. He just latches onto it and says it 52 times. Uh, I love how he just stammers. I thought I had a stammering problem. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> we need to send money to the people that <laughs> need these finances to be financially viable again. To <laughs> Speaking of Big A, is he going on that date tomorrow with Stalker Patty? Tomorrow, Patties? Stalker Patty and Big A, Paisanos of Mulberries <laughs> Street. I'll, I'll have the... the uh, 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 Lasagna, lasagna. <laughs> How uncomfortable is that waiter gonna be? Oh, oh he's yeah. got to stand there. Oh, you gotta make pencil. him up. Yeah. Well, we're doing a whole thing. Nathaniel's going down there and uh, video, getting, getting audio and video. But I think they're coming in studio tomorrow morning, right? Yeah. We should do some kind of you know thing. Like what a, thing? You know how they do that dating game thing on TV? Something. L like what? Which one are we gonna rip off? Uh, Love Connection, dating I, game. I don't know. Maybe these guys uh, can come up with some questions for both of them. So we could get to know them a little bit. Yeah. Maybe we throw Patty in a soundproof uh, booth, oh. and we talk to Big A, and then we talk to Patty, and see what kind of you know. Like the newlywed game. Is that the yeah. one we want to rip off? It, newlywed game, you got to know something about each other. 
Yeah. Dating game. Tattletale. Is finding out about each other. Get Tattletales. The, the big headphones. That's knowing about each other. <laughs> Remember the Bert Convy. Yeah. And they would have uh, yeah the the, treasure hunt. All right. <laughs> treasure so it has to be the uh, the Chuck Woolery <laughs> game. Trophy boxes. Chuck Woolery. Chuck Woolery. The love connection. Love connection. Let's now, do some kind of love connection tomorrow. What they do in love connection? I believe the format was they sit down with Chuck and discuss uh, what they like, um, and then they go out on the date and discuss how the date went. Bitches love Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Chuck Woolery. Yeah. We'll be back in two and two. Flashing his Rolex. All right, can you guys yeah, get something up shit. for tomorrow? Rolex presidential. He was pimping. He was the shit. All right, we'll so, what, so tomorrow they'll have to... What, what questions, though? Ah, uh, these guys are good. We'll figure some stuff I'll out. The man said immediately. We might actually have to do some uh, work after the show today. Oof. We yeah. might actually have to stay 15 minutes. Yikes, that ain't happening. Are you all right with that? <laughs> no. Uh, well. Carmelo, what's up? How you doing? Uh, it's Bill Burr? Uh, Bill Burr is in studio, yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to congratulate him. That that stuff was hilarious last night. I caught the replay on the HBO last night. Oh, yeah. awesome. And I was getting ready to punch out on it, man, but uh, when he started hitting that religion and, and uh, the black people with the clothes and and all that jazz, man, I, I just lost him. My wife's calling me up. Come on to bed, come on to bed. I said, fuck you, i got to watch the rest of this shit. <laughs> That's some funny shit, man. Yeah. That's a review. You want to go to brunch? <laughs> I said, oh fuck you! Did you have to go all the way to the? <laughs> all right, Carmelo. Just a second. Either that phrase is still available at that point, isn't it? <laughs> Honey, you coming to bed? <laughs> fuck you! I was fucking out of it, man. All right, thanks, Carmelo. All right, you guys have a good day, man. Good show. All right, Thank right you. on. Let's say hi to Peter in New Jersey. Peter. Hey boys. Hey. Happy birthday, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. Just go with it. Jesus. Go ahead. I was, uh, was going to say, do you guys have the clip of the end scene of The Devil's Advocate where Pacino's just going off on God? It's just like that, man, where he's saying, God's up there. Oh, his ass off. That is a good scene. Yeah, Pacino do uh, doing his best Pacino impression. It's searching right now, so I can't do anything. All right. Searching. If we have it, we'll play mm. it. If not, we'll get it for tomorrow. Sir, would you like some more coffee? Fuck you! <laughs> hey, uh, Russell. <laughs> Man, I retarded motherfuckers. Russell. Hey, hey. Oh, no. Oh, God. I think, you know, you guys got me on that goddamn delay. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, mention his name, but it starts with Howard, and it, it doesn't end with Hughes, but fuck <laughs> the money that he's making. Somebody ought to shoot that fucker, stab him in the ass with a needle and break it off. You see, know what I'm saying? See, I think Russell has a problem because he thinks we're on this big, long delay. We're not really on a long Russell. delay. Russell. Russell. Oh, you cocksuckers. You, you know, <laughs> you, 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 you talk a lot of good shit, but you fucking end up with Jimmy Norton. Listen, what the fuck does listen. that even mean? Russell. You have to slow the feed down. <laughs> Russell, we did, some news. we did some news for you. What did you think of our Rita coverage? We had some uh, intelligent uh, stuff there. Uh, you want to know what? Uh. I think Rita, I think, you know, I look like a good, fat fucking fuck driver. One with a big, fat Peterbilt with lots of chicken lights and everything. Chicken and I'm right lights. behind it, and I'm going to show up Texas' ass. <laughs> you know, Texas has got a lot of problems. <laughs> You know, I, I, I don't think that New Orleans has a thing to worry about. All Russell. All the folks should come down in there and move back in. Russell, where do you call home? Uh, I call home right right next door to the package store. Or some people call it the liquor store, and it's right here in the back of my truck. But with my little fucking chihuahua dog. His name's Scooter. R Scooter. Scooter. Uh, Scooter. Scooter. Hey, Scooter. Russell, no, where, 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 what state are you from? Uh, well, I, I originated from California. That's where I became mentally retarded. And, uh, I, I know Scott Peterson lived in his neighborhood. I moved out and I now live in Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee, huh? Yeah, that's right. And there's a lot of good looking women over there before Women Out Wednesday even came out. They were already okay. showing me their tips, you know. And it, it, it's a good deal over there, and the property's cheap. And I, I, I I'm the pride very happy of Knoxville. There. All right. Well, thank you, Russell. Hey, I love you too. Uh, I didn't Russell say I love. All right. <laughs> All right. There it goes. Russell. He's one of those. I love you. Fuck you guys. I thought he said he was from Birmingham. The first call, didn't he? Did he? I didn't hear where he said he was from. Did he say that? Maybe he did. I don't know. All right, we got the clip from Devil's Advocate. 
I guess it's the one you're talking about. The hell about, we so. find? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, wow. It should be, though. Is it the one about God? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got it. That's right. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Let's hear. <laughs> what? What happened to Pacino? <laughs> what was that? I'm a fan of man! Fan of man! What did he say? What's he saying there? I have no idea. I'm a, I'm a fan of I'm man. I'm a fan of man. man. Oh, yeah. there we go. That was, uh, all right. That was Pacino, like, over the top. He's he's almost almost reaching that Christopher Walken phase of his career, where he is kind of a parody of himself. Every movie, he's got to do this and get loud! <laughs> you know, you like, yell and... And you know the director wants to be like, dude, could you take it down a little bit? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's Al Pacino. He knows what he's I doing. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, he's got to yell. And, I mean, and the contrast. He, all of a sudden, he's he's interrogating that guy, and all of a sudden, he just starts like hitting the table and going, come on! Get me something! <laughs> His fucking eyes are bugging yeah. out. And you see the other actor sitting across him like, dude, what the fuck? I can't, I can't go with this. Even I know this is bad. <laughs> yeah. What happened to him? You watch The Godfather. He's not doing that. He's become the guy, like, when you take an acting class, there's always that one dude, like, when he goes up to do a scene, you, like, go to the bathroom because it's just so fucking horrific. <laughs> you so can't watch it. Oh, just awful. Just like, oh, my God. What happened? To be or not to be. <laughs> Here's the question. <laughs> I'm a fan of man. <laughs> what? And then the contrast between him and fucking. Uh, yes, well, I, I think that God is. Keanu Reeves. What Keanu? Oh, uh, yeah. great. He just literally says in his head when after he says the thing about the tree, <laughs> then I say my thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even like fucking. Li- he's not even like. What do they call Nothing. it? Nothing. Thro- throwing the ball. No. Nothing. There is no interaction between the two. They could be on different coasts doing it via satellite. <laughs> they just no chemistry there whatsoever. He plays the same character in every movie. He's yeah. one of those guys. Nicholas Cage is wow. the same way, man. Every movie, the same oh, freaking voice. Pacino in The Godfather, there was some kind of dynamic there. He was Michael Corleone at the beginning, a little, you know, kind of not part of the whole family. He was soft-spoken. Him and Kay sitting at the wedding, every, and then he get, gets, you know, uh, uh, evil. But there's no over the top. The only time he really got angry, I think, is when uh, Kay told him about the abortion. Oh, yeah. And then he freaks out. But and that's like a, it. It's like a subtle simmering. Yeah, yeah. The whole movie is a build-up, you know, and it, it, his personality is very dynamic. He goes from those lows to the highs. But now it's just, it's, it's an on-off switch with him. Sometimes he's like this, and then it goes here, <laughs> and there's no in between. His voice sounds like a blown out speaker, <laughs> like one of those big, those big ones you used to get at Radio Shack. <laughs> the bass just can't even. Big tinny mess, or or the one you used to have on the back. Remember they used to put the speakers by your back window on the platform, and a few too many times at the beach, and sand would get on them, <laughs> and it would bounce around as. People were talking and the music was playing. <laughs> Tom Cruise is another one. He's Tom Cruise in every movie. Like he just yeah. There's like nothing the, else uh, there. Was it the Last Samurai? Yeah. He's like, oh, look at the guy from Cocktail. Yeah, it's Cocktail. Oh, yes. And he's sword. He's <laughs> he's one of those guys. Cavalry. Like, you know what? I like those really bad actors where it's like they got to play a different character so they grow a mustache. Right. But they still talk the same way. Same character. With a goatee. I changed the part in my hair. Yeah. Yeah. I've done work on the character. He grew his hair, cut his hair, but. Cannot change his character. Speaking of Tom Cruise, uh, Steven Spielberg says he'll never talk to him again. And they were friends. A little angry. A little angry. Because, you know, he was supposed to promote that, uh, what, War of the Worlds? And he got yeah. all crazy on TV talking about everything else. But Scientology, War of the Worlds, his chick. His chick, Ritalin. Yeah. What and, did Tom uh, say about Spielberg? You're glib. And, and <laughs> Spielberg is like... Spielberg is like, I'll, I'll never talk to him again, and we're not friends anymore, and I'll never work with him again. That's right. Spielberg's really not that big off. in the business. You want to you wanna, uh, throw that friendship away, <laughs> Spielberg. Yeah, that's Do you not... just kill yourself if you're friends with Spielberg and you're in the business, and, and Spielberg isn't your friend anymore? That's not Jesus. that big a bridge to burn. Nah. I don't think so. Who's Spielberg? What has he done? <laughs> Oh, uh, man. <laughs> uh, you want to get into so. this Ron Fez, Harry versus Nathaniel thing? Yeah. What is this about? You were listening on the way home I, yesterday? I, I was listening, and I heard uh, Harry, who's uh, just, he must be in his glory, because he is becoming quite the personality on the Ron and Fez show. He was a little peripheral character we used to goof on, 
on our show. We couldn't be and bothered. And now he's a big part of the Iran Affair show. We couldn't show. be bothered with Harry when he's no. doing our show. Uh, I just, uh, I didn't see it. Maybe we missed the boat with him. Who Maybe. Knows? Who Maybe. Knows? Uh, no, everyone's shaking their head no. He's becoming a big star on the Ron and Fez show. And, the star. And we 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 were just like, Harry, just just get us coffee, please. Yeah. And now uh, he's a big part of uh, Ron and Fez, the Ron and Fez show. And um, I guess he does comedy? Is that what I hear? He was doing some one-man show at the uh, at some theater, a theater. Oh, I saw that. You did see that. Yeah, I was on. Uh, I went on the uh, the stand-up show afterwards. <laughs> oh, you did. Where? Yes. <laughs> Wait, you actually saw Harry? I'm just admitting to these awful gigs. <laughs> yeah, he was performing in Starbucks. Oh yeah, I went on after. Oh <laughs> shit! Did I just let that out? Right after him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was at the uh, UCB uh, theater. Right. Yeah. Right. It was was he funny. good? Yeah, it was funny. Harry was funny. It was cool. Like showed like clips and stuff. He. It's a whole. I mean, it wasn't oh. like it wasn't like O and A funny. <laughs> it wasn't O and A yeah, funny. Like, there wasn't like transvestites and shit like that. Well, what I hear is a presentation. He had like slides. Yeah. Did he have slides? And he would comment on things like uh, Dick Cheney uh, and uh, anything else. Bush. Is it political? It's like a one-man show. Anyone? Bueller? A little help yeah, here? Kind of tra- he was trashing the media. What, is he that, here? That there was no news. Oh, well, bring him in. There's Harry. Look at this. It's like a crossover. This is great. Isn't like it? When the Flintstones went on, the, you know, they did the uh, Jetsons. So bring up the biggest hack reference to a crossover that everyone brings wow. up. Flintstones, Jetsons, yeah. That was good. But no, I was doing a, it was a political <laughs> one man. Political one man. Show. And show. Uh, there, it wasn't like, it wasn't slides like a presentation. It was like bits type of thing, you know. But you, did you have a slide projector? This is not, not the man I saw projector. on stage the other night. You guys yeah. have no. some sort of fucking hold it's over this very, guy. That wasn't him. Posture. The whole way you're holding yourself, man, it's just different. Yeah, it's very, I get very uncomfortable when I come into this. Yeah, you're making me look like an asshole, because I just talked about how great you were. I actually have clips in the delight of it, if you guys want to. Now, now, wait a minute. I'm confused with the slides or the projector or something. Well, no, it wasn't all, like, bits and things. It was, there was part, like, stand-up and part, like, I would uh, talk about, you know, Bush being uh, Time Magazine's person uh, person of the year. Did you have a projector? Yeah. Okay. You just said you didn't. Well, it's not a slide projector. It's like a PowerPoint. Who cares? Uh, okay. Just tell us what the yeah. Just Don't care about the technical aspects I, of your projector. Something was projected and you commented on it. Yeah, and there were like I had like short films and things like that as well. I'm, I'm like this is like a liberal him. going on Fox News right now. You yeah, it's fucking it's over. So there, <laughs> just it's not even about the show. So there were of like, course not. did you have a marker? Well, I mean, sort right. of like a pen. Did you or did you not? I just wanted to undermine his credibility a bit here at first. There were some kind of pictures, and then you commented on them. Yeah. But that isn't his whole show. All right. That's just part of it. All right. It's a small portion of his one-man show. All right. So we got uh, Harry in studio, Nathaniel in studio. We got some audio from Ron and Fez because it all started on the Ron and Fez show. All right. You want to go with clip one? Oh, you have it over here? Okay. Oh. There was like a behind-the-scenes uh, hint dropped. Of our comedian producer, <laughs> Harry, going uh, head-to-head against their comedian producer, Nathaniel. Let's do it. Let's do it. Could you beat Than? In a, in, in a you know, joke-off, or whatever you call it. Um, I mean, at a club, I think I could do well, yeah. Mm. All right, so that's how it started yesterday on the Ron and Fez show. Yeah. Now, okay. uh, this would be, how do you compete in a comedy competition? It, 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 I don't know. It seems a little... The only one I've been in, which yeah. I won. All right. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, going down the gauntlet. Nice. Talking smack. Was done by a plaza meter. Ah, the old plaza meter. Fairly imprecise, except in this particular mm-hmm. instance. What was it? Just a guy putting his hand over your head? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and seeing how many But now, clapped. now that could be skewed one way or another depending on if the audience has a lot of O and A fans. Absolutely. And there a lot of fan fans, family members. I don't know. Seems like it could be loaded a little bit. Sure. Um the other way would be to have professionals that are very, you know, <laughs> astute in the business watch and then judge. Sort and of like say, a, a last comic standing. Kind right, of thing. like a panel of professionals. I think that's the way to go. That could look at the act yeah. and uh, pick it apart. 
All right. Well, we have make someone leave feeling very badly about themselves. We have more audio from the Ron and Fez show. Let's go to track two here. This... All right. So when is this coming down, Fez? I have no idea. It was just mentioned in the hallway, but it sounds like something that we could get rolling on. Yeah, I uh, I accept the challenge on behalf of Harry. Harry, can you, can you shut this guy down? Uh, what exactly is the, the it competition? It would be like last comic standing. You go, you both in go front of a yes, crowd. Yes. In front of, yeah, I think well, I no, can do. It. We put you in a house. You're going to be living together. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute! I got an email. Voss is in. I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> wow! But Voss already heard. He heard last comic standing, and he said, "Count me in." And Harry is Ralphie May. Yeah. All right. So uh, <laughs> that's from Ron and Fez yesterday. Yeah. Let's go to track three. So, Harry, you're going to shut Nathaniel down. You'll finally shut his pie hole. Well, I mean, I like the guy, but if, if he wants a comedic challenge, I yeah, don't... If he, yeah. If he's feeling froggy, jump. Let's do it. Now, what are some of the stipulations you want? I mean, I don't know. Nathaniel, I don't think, is going to have, like, slides and stuff like you had last night. No. Is it going to be straight comedy? Hey, no, any way. Any way he wants to bring it. I mean, I'd like to do it in front of an, you know, a, 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 in some kind of comedy club setting in front of an audience. You know what I mean? And that we'd both go on, you know? Why don't we bring listeners in here? We set this up. I guess we could go about doing that. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. Oh. Danny's trying to get a hold of Nathaniel on the line. Here's the way yeah. I want to do it and see if Nathaniel's brave enough. Loser leaves town. Do it the old-fashioned <laughs> way. Loser leaves XM. No, I, I don't want to see either of us leaving. It won't be you if you're the funniest. I know, but that thing, you never know when something can go wrong. I like Loser Leaves Town. I, I just got here. I don't to stick around. Yeah? Just for a couple of days. Yeah. There's a days in out in Jersey. Get out of right town. Right on the other side of Lincoln Town. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you got to stay there. You got to leave town, <laughs> literally. Yeah, you just got to stay there for three days. Just for three days and a days in across the river. <laughs> this is really funny. <laughs> Get out of town by sunset. All right, uh, let's go to... you got to walk through the Lincoln Tunnel and that little fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> a little walkway on the side. Let's go to track five. Yeah, we'll go to five because that's, that's long. Hit you know it. what? I, I, you know what? I, enough. I can, I can beat him. Ooh. All right, Harry wow. uh, throwing down the, uh, the gauntlet, as they say. I am so distracted by... What, I what is has that? a live band on today. All right. And I don't know what it is. There's some drummer that is a thousand years old. <laughs> Who Good is this? Lord. Oh, that's uh. Oh my God, the great Levon Helm. Oh, it is Levon Helm. Uh, okay. Monica. Yeah. Larry Campbell. That was crazy, guys. Do some thoughts and some more. Levon Helm, 17 after the hour. Right. 17 after the hour. Yeah. Levon Helm. Whoa. Maybe, yeah. Maybe we could get stuff like what? that going on. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> Be, what are you doing? It would be great to have things no. like that going on on our show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now oh, you got the music. Come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Leading at three, that's all they can do. That's all you can do, but the music's playing now, so it really sounds good. you got to add one more for one, variety. One more? Yeah, one more word. Maybe one, maybe... Oh, uh, well, you're setting me up to bomb. I've been in this business long enough. <laughs> come on, say banana the way he does. I'll be like, no, come on. Banana. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Fuck that. I told you I suck at this. <laughs> All right, so yeah. Harry is uh, claiming he could beat Nathaniel in a in a laugh-off. All right. Uh, now uh, Harry discusses Nathaniel's weakness. Oh. This was on yesterday's Ron and Fez show. <laughs> uh, that would be track six. Oh. Hey, uh, John, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey. On this comedy uh, joke off, don't don't make it a leave the town match. What you got to do is you got to set it up for uh, keep the cop to come in and pay the loser live on the air. You know what? I have no problem at all of Fez and Harry being tased. They will not bother them even slightly. Why get a taser involved? Isn't the hair enough? You feel like uh, you can represent? Yeah, man. I, I'm I'm gonna bring it. I people don't understand, you know. Cause what I, what is the weakness for Nathaniel? Uh, Nathaniel's weakness. I think I don't know how much he deals with crowd work at all. And you do. Well, not because I hear you in here working the callers, working me and Fez, and I'm like that kid is well, quick. I think Nathaniel's thing is that just uh, he hasn't been doing it as long as I have. Mm -hmm. what, how you long know? have you wow. been doing it? I've been doing it uh, for four years now. Four years. Yeah. How long it's Stan? Do you know? I think less than a year or a year at this point. And he's very fun. He's really a funny guy. Nothing to take it away from him. But if th that's what this is about, I gotta represent, and I'm gonna win. 
Wow, so he's talking smack about your experience. Yeah. Now, I, I, unfortunately, I have not seen your act, Harry. I've not seen it. I've seen Than, and I was stunned that he had uh, been doing this for such a short period of time. Yeah, he's we very like natural him. on stage. We like him. His uh, delivery is great. You would you would think he'd been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, confidence in his eyes. Yep. Confidence, to prove. funny material. I would say that face is something to prove. Do you have and a clip of your stuff? <laughs> yeah, I have some stuff uh, in the let. I would like to hear a little That's of that. That's a lot of stuff. And I've seen Than work the crowd and uh, uh, work hecklers and stuff and do a great job. You know what? We know what uh, Nathaniel's all about. So, Harry, which bit do you want us to play? Because I don't want to just, like... Pick a good one. Pick a good one. Pick your best bit. <clears throat> Go on. Get a good one. Get a good one. By the way, this is the <laughs> this is the worst challenge ever. Why? Why? Because they're not talking smack yet. Yeah, there's a little smack talk. Well, you got to be in Harry's, studio. There's Harry's, a lot of yeah. staring. Harry's complimenting uh, Nathaniel too much. I'm going to kick his ass and he blows. There we go. Wow. And not a, All right, there you go. All right, what bit are we going to hear here? Can you riff on it's, his uh, wrinkled about green shirt? weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> Yeah, and um, the, I, the reason I wore this is because it's cold. I'm not wearing this for, for kids. Really? Statement. Yeah, it's. I hope you were spending the time you should have been ironing, working on your act. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Wait, so you're wearing a short sleeve shirt over well, a short sleeve shirt because you're cold? And is that 10% of arm you're covering? It's supposed covering. to be longer than the shirt that you have underneath it. <laughs> right. so it looks a little if you're ridiculous. You're cold. You usually wear like a vest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He really is going to get out of town. He's like an old west bartender. He needs those things around his arms. <laughs> Couple of shots of whiskey. All right, so this is a bit on the <laughs> weapons of mass destruction. All right. All right. Weapons of mass destruction was the biggest phrase. Weapons of mass... We have to go in Iraq because they have weapons of mass destruction. I don't know if you watched the, uh, the coverage of the war like I did, but the Iraqis barely had weapons of regular destruction. <laughs> not, exactly the, not exactly the best adjective to use. Uh, as it, they painted this picture as if he had the weapons, but he just refused to use them. Like, I saw them, they have been bombing us for 30 days now. Do you think maybe we should use one of the weapons? Uh, not yet. I want to see where they're going with this. <laughs> That's pretty funny. funny. It's not bad. That's good stuff. I'm, I, I will be honest yeah. in, in saying that the guy who comes in here at the radio station, not the guy who does the stand-up. And I don't know why I can't uh -oh. make the transition. Oh, boy. It's not the guy? No, I'm saying... You're, I, you're not that guy. No, I'm that guy on stage. You know you're going to have to do... Are you going to do that like when you go on for acting auditions? When they go, hey, you know, you think you <laughs> no, really I'm got something that there, kid? Guy, yeah. Come in guy. and read for this part. Okay, before I read for this part, yeah. I just want to let you know. <laughs> but the guy who's going to read for this God. is not that guy you saw no, on stage. No, what I'm saying is... I'm not He'll hearing any here confidence. Shortly. I mean, um, obviously your stuff's pretty good, yeah. but you ha you have no confidence. No, I have no confidence it, in my ability. But if we do this laugh off, we're going to do it live on one of the shows, probably on Ron and Fez. Yeah. So you're gonna have to do it for a national audience. They are actually doing you a favor. What that this awful vibe that they can <laughs> unsupportive know, I, thing. Yeah, you gotta be yeah. able to plow through that. It's a tough love. Nathaniel comment? Uh no. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I mean I'm I think that I'm uh I'll do fine. Mm -hmm. Uh I don't I don't know, is all your stuff politically it's based? It's not all politically No, based. do we have another example of something that isn't political no, on the uh, left? The only thing I loaded up was the political stuff from the Monday night show. What else do you touch on? I mean, I touch on everything from, you know... Uh, relationships. Personal life, yeah, relationships. Yeah, personal life, personal parents, stuff, things like per that. Yeah, family. Family. Related uh, stuff. Well, let's play another track. Which one do you want? Um, go to the one on... Uh, oh, let me see. Just pick one at random now, because that was like a good uh, one, and he knew it was good. So now just pick one. See what uh, comes up. Uh, Bush skin color. All right. Here's Bush talking about uh, freedom and democracy in Iraq during the 2004 election. You know, there's a lot of people in the world who don't believe that, uh, uh, uh -oh. that people whose skin color may not be the same as ours can be free and self -done. I reject that. I reject that strongly. <laughs> people think that, Mr. President? Nobody thinks that. You just made that up. And it's fucking brilliant. You can do that with anything. Uh, there, there's, uh, there's people out there who, uh, who think it's okay to call Canadians snow faggots and... <laughs> I'm against that. <laughs> there, there, there's, uh, there's people out there who think it's right to cut off baby heads and skull fuck them. And that's wrong. 
I think you went too far there on that one. With the skull fucking? Snow faggots, yeah. Snow faggots. I'm ripping big the baby's laugh. head off. A little. That was a good Who's house. That psycho yelling during your set? I Oh, Eastside Dave from the uh, Ron and Fez show. Actually, oh, a, oh, yeah. a friend. Oh, really? Who got yeah. a little, yeah, Eastside tends to get a little bit wasted. Oh, that's yeah. the worst when a friend of yours. Yeah. Loaded it's house, it. huh? Oh, loaded house. <laughs> well, I asked some friends to come. It wasn't a bringer show. How yeah. nerve-wracking is it when you, like, go to click on a clip? Like, that, that the crowd that's is just going to turn on you. That's the worst part is when you do that, you fuck up one clip, and then they all, because it's on a PowerPoint presentation. And then for the rest of the show, you're fucked. So if you, in five minutes in, then all your clips are out of sync. Yeah, see, I don't think that's what, uh, well. It's not really stand-up is what you're No, saying. So no. it's going to be weird. This is going to, you know, it's like the the first uh, Ultimate Fighting, when you actually saw different styles. One guy <laughs> right. was a boxer. Yeah, this is, one guy did, you, before they all knew how to grapple. Yeah. This is what this is. What is better? This is like what stand-up. Is better? This is or like a Ma- Muhammad Ali. Or whatever thing, that is. Slideshow. What would you, you call it? The presentation? Interactive? What is it called? It's, Daily show? I just called it a one-man show. It's That's a little pompous. One-man show. You you cannot just call a one-man show because it's you and a PowerPoint presentation. One-man show is something that I think an established uh, orator or a comic does. Spalding Gray. Spalding Gray. There you go. Spalding Gray. Why don't you take his example and jump off a fucking <laughs> boat? <laughs> uh, yeah, Spalding Gray. All Someone right. that has established something. I think it's very presumptuous that no one knows you and you're having a one-man show. Like, one-man show is, whoa, I, I know that name. I got to see this guy. Well, uh, there's plenty, there are plenty of famous people who do, uh, non-famous people who do one-man shows. You don't have to be famous to do a one-man show. You just don't know about them? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I like how people direct the one man show and there's always that moment where like they make a comment and then the whole room goes dark and then they'll show <laughs> yeah. a clip and then the dude who's doing the one man show takes like five steps over to the left and then a spotlight comes on over the thing. It's like my dad in nineteen seventy four. It's just like, Oh shut up. You could do that with a flashlight, you fucking moron. I directed that. I directed his one. I told him to walk five feet over there. The drama I, there. Yeah. I it, brought it, the dimmer it, down and then turned yes, it on the other spot. It ends what you were talking about and starts anew. It's like a different oh. color. Yeah. Yeah, man. A different mood. Oof. Let's say hi to Ellis. <laughs> Ellis in Philly. Ellis. Yeah, you are a one fucking uh, John Stewart hack. You fucking rip off. So anyone who oh. does anything well. about politics is just sucking. Well, there's a little just yes, to the delivery. There is a little bit. What's that? No, Nathaniel had that great line when they're saying what his show was like, and he said the Daily Show, and everybody else missed it. Oh, okay. Because oh, yeah. we weren't listening. Maybe. So, you're, <laughs> so uh, have you been influenced by the Daily Show, where John Stewart at the beginning there's a lot of clips. And he comes back and comments on uh, what was said. Yeah, I enjoy the Daily Show. It's just a different way of, you know, doing a comedic thing. It's not the only thing I do. I've done, you know, I've done stand-up for the most part. This is the only one Plus, man you're show you're only done. four years in. I, you, yeah. th- I couldn't defend anything I did six so, years into Yeah. Stand-up. Plus, playing the clips is great because you don't have to write setups. So. Oh, 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 nice. Wow. All right, wow. Nathaniel. Wow. wow. Are they being lazy? I don't understand. It's, uh, it's, I think there's sarcasm there. <laughs> That's what I love about Nathaniel. I love it's his doing stuff that I can't ways. do at the club because when you do that type of material at the club, the audience sometimes doesn't give a shit about that. They'd rather hear about, hey, remember Tetris? That's what they like at that fucking club. Ooh, so that was it. a little swipe at stand up. Yeah, yeah, I love stand up. I'm just saying sometimes you can't None do that. None of you type guys down at UCB like stand up. Guys no, are always trashing true. us. Yeah. Saying, yeah, that we're talking about airplane food. <laughs> and that you guys are like these 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 brilliant fucking I'm turning on you right now. <laughs> nice. I see that, Phil. You're the That's one good. guy who supported me too. I have no one left I'm now. still with you. But I just know that anytime they do a, a anytime they do an interview with an alternative comic, yeah. They can't just fucking stand on their own merit. They always have to trash stand ups. Yeah. They're like, This isn't like some they always go, some guy working on his five minutes for Letterman with his airplane food joke. It's like, yeah, that's how you get on Letterman. Thanks. <laughs> you can get on Letterman with airplane food jokes. Yeah. So maybe back in 85. All right, we got a uh, Alabama trucker on the line. Alabama Hello? trucker, what's up? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to throw something out there. Uh, I might be wrong, but uh, Harry, you fucking suck. You burka wearing communist motherfucking faggot. 
You're a fucking piece of shit. You suck. Every time I hear you, I want to drive my truck off the fucking road. Punching out, guys. Thanks. Uh, in my defense, I'm not a communist. Well, you made uh -huh. fun of Bush, so obviously you have yeah. to be a communist. Yeah. I mean, see, that's how it goes. You, yeah, can't, you can't make fun of Bush and... Then you're against the troops <laughs> right. in America. Exactly. No matter how many times that guy just sounds like an absolute fucking moron in front of a microphone, if you make fun of him. Right. You communist fucking faggot. Yeah. That's right. So. Uh, John from Freeport, ask Harry about the David Cross line that he ripped off. I didn't rip off a... Ooh, Was someone accusing line. you of that? I said that um that the magnetic decals on that you put on your car might be a pointless gesture. But it wasn't really like a bit. I didn't do like a bit on it. It's something that he said about American flags uh, during the 9/11 thing. But it wasn't. So the really magnetic, like the ribbons and stuff you're yeah. talking about, that's you, what you do. And then you say it's pointless gesture. Where does that go from there? It, it's not a bit. It's just a, like a quick reference I did. Both hack topics, by the way. Yeah. Because I had bits on both of those. <laughs> 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 I had bits about the American flag. I mean, that's hacky shit. Yeah. No like, one, no one can claim that. Dated. Uh, all right, well. Now, I talk about hugging dogs and how it makes you fat. <laughs> <laughs> I came up with that. All right, well, like Hurricane Rita, this is slowly but surely developing. Yep. I'm pretty the, confident about a win no matter what the yeah. format is. This yeah. Harry Nathaniel laugh-off is slowly, slowly spinning out of control. There's just a lot of stuff going on, it seems. with your, You're like you're dependent on technology. It's like a shuttle launch. It could end in no, disaster it, it, I did and one, loss of life. Only some tiles one. come off. <laughs> yeah, during his hack, he loses some <laughs> heat tiles. Can't bring him into the end of the show. I have done one one-man show. It was Monday. Uh, before that, I've never done one. I have. I don't have another one scheduled. I've been you doing just stand -up. did stand-up. Yeah. So, that, so yeah. it has to be a standoff. Well, yeah. I, it was a stand-up standoff or whatever. Yeah, I wasn't going to bring slides with me. All right. Just, no, color charts and... Some graphs. And what happens when to you have to go to Kinko's before your act? It could be a problem. <laughs> it's just you know it it helps. There were a lot of like Letterman type bits that I that Letterman I had. type bits. Well, yeah, things that Letterman aren't necessarily Letterman S Q. What things that aren't necessarily not aren't necessarily like stand up. Yeah, you know, like with the um, Photoshop stuff. Oh, you do photoshops? Yeah, yeah. Wow, uh, you do them yourself? No, I I you don't have a guy. Stand -up. I have a friend of mine who did that it, does yeah. the photoshops. Yeah. And then you bring them on stage and they get laughs. Yeah, they, it did all right Monday. I mean, it did pretty well. Is right. the guy who directed the show? Hmm? Is the guy who, like, directed the show also do the Photoshop? Um, or do you have a whole staff helping I you? I just have friends. Isn't like that... Staff. That's a little odd. Like, someone else's shit well, is going up my, there. It's my idea, and I, I come up with the concept. I just don't have the skill to Photoshop it. What I is an example of one of your Photoshops? One of the bits I had was um, I was talking about how Mission Accomplished. He had that banner. And right, just, we all saw that. That's just you know a catchphrase. It's just like a bumper sticker. So I had that wasn't the first slogan they were going with. Ah, they were so actually you Photoshopped going, yeah. a bunch of different slogans. What were a couple of them? Yeah, uh, honk if you're Arab. Uh, there was Jesus saves white people, and um, and the the one I thought was the catchiest was uh, ass grass or cash. No one starts a faulty invasion for free. And it, it worked. Uh, it killed. I mean, it doesn't yeah, yeah. always work well as far as stand-up goes. It wouldn't be a bit that I did stand-up. Yeah. It's kind of a visual. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, glad, we'll glad I made you go yeah, through that it, visual um, bit. Uh, me too. <laughs> 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 Eroding credibility. <laughs> well, One we'll see where this, uh, where this goes. All right. I'm sure Ron and Fez will have more on this. It's uh, Harry versus Nathaniel. Yeah. And a laugh off. Yeah, we'll keep tabs on uh, this, <laughs> this is, developing situation. This is so exciting. Yeah, keep your excitement in check there, Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's all, all right. right. I like it. Yeah, why not? All right, we'll continue in just a bit. All right, we're continuing here. I got some granola. I got to get down. Yum, Oh, yum, you're yum. eating. Got to eat. Yeah. Granola. It's a great sounding thing for something to eat. <laughs> Very tasty. What does that do for you? Bind you up? Well, yeah, kind of. It's like eating cement. <laughs> <laughs> gravel. A little gravel action. Uh, what is that laced with? <laughs> Put anything in there? Just like uh, a couple like uh, raisins. You eat things that aren't supposed to be eaten outside of your home. Like, this is the environment for sandwiches and, yeah, but and like yogurt. Things like that. Things that you got to pour in a bowl and put milk on, and now you need a spoon, and you need the bowl. It, the problem is when you do morning radio, there's not much to eat. 
in the morning. It's, it's like, like one of those awful grape nuts commercials <laughs> where the guy's in the bathrobe out in the woods. Yeah, with the bowl in his hand. Sitting on a tree stump. That's what he eats. It's like no one's out there eating like that. Yeah. Outside with a bowl and a spoon. and It's just too much work, I'll be, is what I I'm saying. I understand, but if I don't eat, I pass out. I'm like a step away from pizza ovens in here. <laughs> and he does the blueberry the thing. dough around. Anthony. And he can't hold the blueberries in either hand. for. T- I don't know if it turns them <laughs> blue. He just sits there and I'm like, I mean, three card Monty with his blueberries. Yeah, you're adding fruit into it. I'm trying and... to find stuff I could eat in the morning. What? what? You eat like a half a bagel and seltzer water, you're good for the day. What about like just I haven't egg seen Billy sandwich. anything yet? Egg white sandwich or something? Something that's compact, easily that's portable. That's the problem. It's like you could eat an egg white sandwich or granola. There's nothing to eat in the morning. What else do people eat? Yogurt? Know. What? In the morning? I don't Bacon, know. egg, and cheese on a roll. Mm. Yeah, they got that stuff. Yeah, that was the old. It always seems like a good thing. idea. Yeah, it seems like a good idea. Just sits there like a big glove oh, of wet cement. Every morning when I was doing construction, they would go to the deli and grab, you know, give me two eggs over easy with sausage, bacon, ham, cheese, and on oh. a roll. And you'd get it, you'd bite into it, and and the yolk would shoot out the back and. It's on your fingers. You're trying to eat as you're driving the company van. There's yolk on the steering wheel. Oh. It's just a goddamn mess. The worst is when you, st- you get in line at McDonald's and the guy in front of you is a construction guy and he's got like 400 orders the list. Writ- written on like a, a shingle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yo, give me uh, 20 sausages and egg biscuits. 42 orange juices. And he's fucking huge so you can't say anything. You're going to be like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. It used to happen at the deli all the time. It's the worse at, at a deli because it's like one guy behind the counter. All right. He's there cutting the ham for the sandwiches and cooking the eggs. And he's got 20 more to do, and you're sitting there and just want like a, a sandwich and a pack of cigarettes. It's worse getting behind the scratch-off people. Oh, what oh, now? Man. Yeah. I, well, uh, we're, we're talking about, you know, enough. getting behind people in line. When they step up to the counter to get all their scratch-offs and all you have is like... The newspapers are, and a you know a bottle of water. And or there's no hey dude, if you want to go first, go ahead. Courtesy no. there, they will sit there and all right, give me one of the, give me the set give me, for give life. Me two. Yeah, set for life. Set Instant for life. winners. <laughs> you need more than just that money to be set for life, you freak. <laughs> yeah, instant winners. Put the uh, I need the numbers here. Uh, give me three, five, nine boxed. Give me one broken eight months. No matter how much I win. <laughs> Because I don't understand money. <laughs> uh, give me a family will hound me forever. <laughs> that would be a great reality show. Yeah. Watch these people blow all give their money. Give me seven flat screen TVs and no property. <laughs> yeah, let me give me let me get eighty grand of depreciating assets. <laughs> no, yeah, give me two hundred grand of liabilities, no assets. <laughs> <laughs> Julie. Yeah. Help me out. Hey. Okay, Anthony. Uh, yes, Julie. Uh, Stop what? with the freaking granola. It's wonderful, and people do eat that in the woods. <laughs> I'm out in the middle of Montana, out in Grizzly Country, backpacking, and that is exactly what people eat. We ate couscous and grilled vegetables because animals don't smell that as something different from the environment. You goddamn hippie. I'm, pra- I'm, I'm, I'm uh, totally not a hippie. I'm totally a corporate you totally person. Are. I have a corporate job, but you know what? Why well, are you a vegan man? And Opie, let me tell you a really good breakfast. Yeah? Steel cut oatmeal. Don't cook it. I've started that, but it takes a half hour. No, don't cook it. Don't cook it. And then put Skim milk, coconut, Don't peanut, cook it. walnut, frozen blueberries. Fish oil. Frozen blueberries. I was with you, but this steel cut oatmeal, I, I started uh, cooking that crap up. You can't eat that without cooking it. Yeah, you can. It's like I eating little it pebbles. It. Don't cook it. All the nutrients will come out. Are you a vegetarian? Not at all. No? You eat meat? Absolutely. Okay. I had you pegged as one of those. No, one of them no, vegans. I'm totally, not one of the, I'm totally not one of those type of people. But when you are traveling, when you're backpacking and doing that type of thing, you need things that are light. Oatmeal is one of them. Light. You carry sugar. You carry, you know, you carry um, other alternatives. How far are you backpacking that you got to, like, figure in the weight of the food that you're carrying? How long do you go for? 
couple days. Couple of days. I How never, much food are you going to carry where it's like, well, that puts us over the top for weight? I never understood the whole walking in the woods thing. Like, where are you walking to? Is there, what's the goal? Well, you know, my goal was just, I wanted to see wildlife in Montana, so I got to see grizzlies. Running in the wild. I mean, how many people can actually say they saw grizzly bears? Like... We do every day. <laughs> Comes in, you in with your back lousy back. clips. That's why I would never do that shit. You like instantly realize, you know, why we live inside when you go. In, everything's faster. Everything can fly. Fucking run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if a squirrel at wanted to attack you, it would win. It could kick your ass. It could. It yeah, fucking right. You couldn't stop it. You'd be freaking out, screaming like a girl. And you're sitting there with your backpack and a, and a walking stick just in case something <laughs> jumps right. out at you. You think you're so tough until you yeah. walk in the woods and realize, yeah. You ever see that lady? She's riding the mountain bike and this mountain lion jumped on her. Yeah. And literally yeah. was only on her for half a second, ripped half her face her off. Face right off. Well, you Be always fight mountain lions back. You you you, you can win a yeah. mountain lion. Yeah, sure you can. How? You have, well, first of all, you carry knives. Oh, there you go. And all you, right, Tarzan. And you carry pepper spray. Pepper spray. <laughs> so and it's not thing... a little bottle. It's not a little canister. It's a huge bottle that clips onto your pack. Yeah. Well, you have it in your hand as you're walking through the woods. Yeah, because those I... things don't announce their arrival, especially when you're riding a bike. A mountain bike and a mountain lion eats your face. Uh, he didn't announce that he's coming out. Well, no, mountain lions, you have to be most concerned about mountain lions because they're very, very stealth-like animals. You know, they hunt you. That Whereas is... the bears, if you walk into their paths... See, that's why I can't go walking in the food. woods and hiking and stuff, knowing that the, well, these things might be just looking at you and, and, and deciding yep. if they're going to pounce on you or not. Well, I was you lost you in the woods really once. Don't have much of a problem. Black bear comes right uh, down one of the trails and I I just stopped dead in my tracks and looked at it and if it decided it was going to turn around and do anything it didn't do anything it just continued on its way but if it decided it wanted to do anything what yeah, was I going to do did we ever Done. tell this story yeah I told it on the air a while ago you sure yeah Cause I thought this happened after we uh... told it when we got back oh we did okay yeah yeah I got I was Anthony I was got upstate lost New York in the woods. <laughs> Went hiking and, and uh, oh went down the different side of the mountain and got lost in the woods overnight. In, well, that in, was by in yourself? In October, me and my chick. All right, Julie, and thank you. And we had to find a lean-to that was like, we found these signs, these signs that said lean-to this way. Uh, what does that mean? How, it meant that there was this lean-to, a piece of... A piece of wood it just on the ground the and, and some wood on the ground so you're not laying on the ground. It was pouring rain. It was freezing cold, and we had nothing. Were you crying? We were. I was so close to just losing my mind and busting into tears and just losing They went for everything. like a two-hour hike. Two-hour hike. Did you send the story into Reader's Digest? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and, and we just kept walking and walking and walking, and, and it got to the point where we had to go down these cliffs where once we went down them, I knew there was no turning back and going back up. You just had to keep going. And there was just nothingness. And we had no food, no water. It was raining, so we stood under this big tree that was dripping water with our mouths open just to get water. And uh, <laughs> and finally the next... So, so it started getting dark, and I'm like, we can't walk out of here in the dark. There's no way it's going to happen. We will fall and break something because there are cliffs and stuff. So... Uh, we we saw the sign for this lean to. We got there. It was already dark by the time we got there. Um, had one jacket, which we both had to like sleep under. Ugh. Didn't sleep much. Woke up the next morning. We had been walking so long that my ankles, I could barely move them. It was so so. Now I'm walking like a cripple for the rest of the way to try to get out. And another eight hours walking out of the woods. Finally popped out onto a road and found some kind of a, a ranger station. And uh, got driven Christ. back. Yeah. It was just the worst. And, and I, I will never, ever go hiking again. And you saw a bear. Yeah. A Throw bear walking the across the uh, path. And I'm like, oh, great. going to be eaten by a bear. This is fantastic. Great. Oh, I don't fuck with nature on any level. I don't no. go in the ocean. No, no ocean? Oh, my God. The ocean is the scariest goddamn thing. There are so many monsters under there. The yeah. water alone, that whole, what's that thing, the riptide or the, the, the undertow? Yeah, undertow and the rip currents. And, and you're supposed to just relax and be like, okay, it's pulling me this way. I just got to swim to the side. You don't do that. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> sucking in, <laughs> fucking shrimp and shit. You're dead. 
Nobody does that. That is so funny. Yeah, just relax as you're getting pulled out and don't know how far yeah, out I'm you're supposed to like wet my finger and see which way it's the Where's fucking the wind blowing yeah, and always... I'm being brought out in this current. Now it's going to bring me out and then swim sideways. Uh, yeah, sideways. Parallel to the parallel shore. Parallel to the shore until you're out of the rip current. No, yeah. No fucking way. Sure. No Keep way. the knife in your teeth just in case the sharks get you. In a shark, it's like not only getting eaten, you're drowning at the same time. It's like it's like everything but being lit on fire. It's like the worst fucking <laughs> two out of three of the worst deaths ever. And it's not like there's not options. There's pools, there's lakes. I'll swim in that right. shit. You know there's nothing yeah, under there. Even like a get... lake. It's just like lakes are scary too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's got... one of those things, and, and they don't they don't give up their dead. Yeah, because the water is so cold that whatever fuck happens in your intestines, you never float to the top. So you're just down the bottom. You and a fucking pirate, just from <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking 400 years ago. <laughs> that, that's how you have to spend eternity with a fucking pirate. You and a fucking pirate. Holy shit! <laughs> and that, it's a little long, but that could be a new name for, uh, God damn. for a member of Whack Bag. Me and a fucking pirate. Yeah. yeah. That is horrible. That's classic. You don't, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, did, I did a gig with a, a dude when I was in uh, Green Bay, and he, he goes, I own some property. So he goes up to show it to me, and uh, we went up there, and there were bear tracks, on, and we were 10 feet from the car, and I just went right back to the car. So yeah. Like, He's like, they don't do it unless they're, like, hungry. Yeah, sure. and like, yeah. Yeah, aren't they usually hungry? Yeah. Because their whole life is looking for food, pretty much. Yeah. Unless like, they're dude, having I've sex seen to make you do more. comedy. You suck at that, so <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I'm not going to go out on a limb. But, you know, <laughs> I'm not your, believing you. Yeah, your wildlife skills are just as well. No. Uh, I like the uh, I like going down to, like the Bahamas and going in that water there, uh, but I I never go out over my head and and still like you said it's creepy. You could see down to your feet. The yeah. water's completely clear. That kind of helps me out a little. I, I'm constantly I, looking around. No, I swim out to the buoys and everything. No. Oh, yeah. I did it one time. I went to the uh, Dominican Republic and I I did that snorkeling thing. Yeah. And it's just all this. These schools of fish were going around, and everybody's like, oh, my God, it's so beautiful. I'm like, dude, this is fucking bait for bigger fish. And you're swimming in no, it. No, and you just see them. Every once in a while, you would get, you'd get near, like, when it just seemed like a little fish. When it wanted to, bam, it was just, it was gone. It's just like, and I'm fucking this big lumbering, <laughs> yeah. my snorkel. I mean, I would be, you know. You know what the creepiest part of snorkeling? Anything that wanted to kill me. <laughs> it it would have killed you. Oh, yeah. Snorkeling or scuba diving, the creepiest thing is when you look off into the distance under there and it just, just goes fades forever. into fogginess, though. And then darkness. And you're just waiting for something to come out of, oh, yeah. out of it that's no. bigger than you. I picture that Jaws moment. Right. When he's in, like, the cage. The cage. And it goes away and then it, it comes back from the other side. Yeah, and yeah. It slams into it. Oh. You're just waiting. You look around and go, I know something's just going to come flying at me from out of that haze. Plus, because I, I also hear, like, sharks from, like, hundreds of miles away. <laughs> When they hear like a splash, can tell distress. Yeah. So I'm trying to calmly <laughs> do, not be attracting anything. Yeah. And you know damn well you're looking through this haze, trying to see something with your stupid landlubber eyes, and <laughs> the, and the shark like he's 15 miles away and sees you perfectly. Like <laughs> That's clear some, as day. Some sort of radar on his nose. Yeah. Knows it's you. Know your food. Knows you're scared. Yeah. Coming at you at 60 miles an hour. There you go with your flippers. <laughs> Yeah, all all that stuff. We're gonna Snakes, go all of it. Creepy shit. We're I like go dogs. To That's it. Paul. Hey, hey, how's you guys doing? All right, Paul. Hey, man. Go ahead. Hey, that that murky water shit scares me too. Hey, uh, when I lived up in Alaska, I lived up there for like four years, and uh, you'd have to be a, a nut to go out in the woods with pepper spray and a knife. Uh, they always told everyone up there you gotta bring a gun and a dog because like. I guess those animals are so wild, they don't understand what, uh, they think a dog's a wolf, so they're looking for more of them, so they kind of leave you alone. Yeah, a dog is probably pretty handy to have if an animal attacks you. Uh, and a gun. Yeah, do a dog is like an appetizer, that's like potato yeah. skins. That'll hold off the yeah. animal long enough, that's your meat shield. Until you can pull your weapon out and shoot. Don't get attached to your dog if you're going to be using him for this purpose. And as he's getting eaten by the animal, as the animal's mouth is full of your dog's throat, then you fire a few rounds into his head. Not caring if you hit your own dog because you really didn't love hey, him. This is a good question for Anthony. Chris, go ahead. Chris, turn down your radio and talk to us. Let's go. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to know if y'all were spooning. With that one jacket that lean to. Yes, we were spooning. Were you spooning, Anthony? No, we slept <laughs> on separate sides of the lean to. 
Did you of sleep? course. You didn't sleep, though. I dozed off a couple of times, but let me tell you something, how creepy it is. It was raining, very cold rain, thunder and lightning, and so so I'm laying in the lean-to. And, uh, you so I got, were lucky to find the lean-to. Very, very. Oh, and it was, it been it over. was just... We couldn't make any fire, though, so it was still very cold. Why? You've watched Survivor. Stop it. Everything's soaking wet, and in ideal conditions, it's impossible to make a fire. What would you do to start a fire, you think? I think if what it, I would if do... If everything was dry, would you attempt to start a fire? I would have attempted. Probably, um, I would have uh, looked for any kind of string that was around and made a bow and tried to uh, wrap a uh, straight piece of wood. And then use another piece of wood that with a little rut cut in it. And then put the uh, straight piece <laughs> with the bow and uh, grab a rock with some kind of indent and put it on top of the straight piece. And then to, uh, with a bow back and forth real quick, try to uh, make some friction in the other piece of sure, wood. Sure, sure. Yeah, that would have worked. We saw that on Survivor. It wouldn't have worked, It took by them the way. days to, it takes to start you, a yeah, fire. It's a talent that takes a lot of practice. Uh, no, uh, so I'm laying there in the lean-to. And now I got a sideways view of the world because I'm kind of laying down. It's very creepy. And with each lightning bolt, the whole woods lit up. So oh, it's and like then, a horror movie. And then got You're just waiting for pitch that face. black. You're right. Just waiting for that face. Right. You see the face for the split second, then it's pitch dark again. Yes. I was waiting. Holy crap. Like in the, not even so much where it would the face would be right by your face, but in the distance at the tree line by where this little clearing for the lean-to was. Every time it lit up, I would just expect to see some horrific silhouette of the like person that's dead. going to kill us. Yeah, yeah, Evil Dead, <laughs> some type of it just zombie, anything. This is actually making me want to take like a survival class because I really, you know, if, so, if something ever happened and like the whole system just failed, I would last literally <laughs> like about 18 <laughs> minutes just walking around the woods with like your laptop. Yeah, still believing that the system was coming back. That would be my the lean laptop. to. That would be my lean to. I just open it up and stick Put my your big, head, under big the head underneath it. What if you saw like oh. red eyes out in the woods? Dude, I I would have freaked out. I was on the brink, on the brink the entire time. And then the night was. It took so long. Like it it got dark. I guess at about seven o'clock. So. By 7 o'clock, we're in this lean-to, and I know we're not going to be able to move for 12 hours until the sun comes back up. So you'd nod off and then, like, wake back up, and I go, okay, how long was that? I'd look at my watch, and it's like I nodded off. Last time I looked at the watch, maybe it was 9 o'clock at night. It's like 9.15. I'd been out for maybe 15 minutes. I thought it you would be 2 take, in the morning. You should have taken turns. Turns what? Someone watch and the other sleep. No, there was no watching. There yeah, was... Someone's got to be Charlie Sheen and see that Viet Cong yeah, in the distance from the click light. Click your claim words. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that that's pretty much what I was expecting, just no, to it. see the bushes kind of come alive. Here's the question I got for you. Yeah. When does it get to the point where it's every man for themselves? Oh, where uh, where I would have to... Tough uh... question, I understand, because, you, you know... You love no. your chicken stuff, but when does it? You're in that situation. The survival when, instinct. Kick when in. do you? How how far does it get, or how bad does it get before you decide it's every man for themselves? Well, I think if either one of us snapped a leg or something, I think then the other one just has to go. Bear's coming. Leave the other one. Bear's coming. She doesn't run as fast as you. Let's say. Are you waiting? No, I told her stay there because I was walking kind of a little ahead, uh, and when I saw the bear, I turned around and just said, "Stay right there." Don't move, and the bear like. But everyone across. has that breaking point where you have to go into every man for themselves. No, I'm like limping along like Dustin Hoffman and Papillon. With my, I, I was <laughs> hobbled. It was worse than that. It was worse than that. I was like James Caan in uh, what movie was that? I'm your biggest fan in Misery. Oh, misery, sure. Yeah, oh. I'm your number one fan. I was like hobbled. <laughs> Both ankles were useless because you, you climb in the whole day before. We were climbing up rocks and stuff, and you're using a lot of your leg muscles. And then to just stop in the cold rain and sleep, no, there was no stretching. Yeah, I'm going to stretch this out now. Yeah, I'm petrified. It's raining, and we're lost in the woods, but I'm going to do my stretching. You just want to make yourself look real small. I was exhausted, so we just, you know, crapped out for as long as we could. And then waking up the next morning, my legs were, I, I was like, oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to walk out of here. I am crippled. I need a wheelchair. 
<laughs> but then, you know, after walking a little while, you kind of get, get better. But then we saw, like, little things. They were trails that I guess people use for hiking. But God knows when or, you know, when you're ever going to see another person. So there were these little um, little things nailed to a tree. We found one. It looked like a mailbox, an old wooden mailbox. And you lift it up. And it had, like, you could leave notes there. And it had, like, a map and things. And mm-hmm. that's how we realized which way we had to go. And we left a note, walking this way on trail, lost. But we had to leave a little note in there. And then uh, they, they had pencils oh, inside pencils this in little there. thing. And left a little uh, note, and um, All right. it was a very harrowing experience. Well, Ray in California has a question for you too. Ray, go ahead. Hey, Anthony. Hey. Hey, Anthony. Um, are you really going to give your pugadoodle up to the bear? <laughs> well, you know the pugadoodles are so cute <laughs> that I would have a problem with that. Uh, hey, Anthony. I got a better idea. I'll give you my ex-wife. Does that work? Oh, an ex-wife would have been perfect. <laughs> I'd have lobbed her bodily into the bear's mouth. <laughs> I'd have been like, bear, yo. <laughs> You've been chumming for bear. All right. <laughs> hey, Fred. Hey, thanks for taking the call. Fred in Arizona. Know, hey, thanks. Uh, I know Jimmy's listening, so happy birthday, Jimmy. And uh, the Ramon thing, can you explain that? I missed that day, the inside joke last Yesterday, it was absolutely hilarious, the Ramon call. Ramon. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe one day we'll do Inside Joke Day and All explain right. some of hey, these inside I jokes. I know that uh, really he was spooning with little Boy Scouts. Well, Ramon is, uh, uh, we have to explain this again, is Steve's imaginary little uh, little butt buddy. Well, well, <laughs> well it's not really. When, when we first started here, we needed production pieces. You know, those All little right. things cool. you hear during uh, uh, our commercial breaks. Uh, for the Opie and Anthony show, little teaser, things like that for the show, little promo for the show. And Steve was putting these things together. And it was d- uh, various different ideas that he would just pull out of his ass and come up with. Uh, one of these things was the Ramon concept. It was this, um, this uh, fictional characters. One of them is a rich voiceover guy who uh, might be that guy you hear for the movie trailers and stuff. And uh, he does voiceover work from a home studio. And uh, he has a big mansion. And inside that mansion, he doesn't do much work. His houseboy, Ramon, does all the work. And the, ga- the gag is that this guy is doing um, a promo for the Opie and Anthony show, and in the middle of it, something bad happens, and he needs Ramon's help to solve whatever problem it may be. Some are uh, an example. He crapped himself, and crap uh, uh, went all over his shoes. So in the middle of doing his Opie and Anthony promo, he goes, Ramon! clean this up or clean off my shoes or whatever the whatever fuck one was. that was. Uh, and then uh, they, it was like a series that started where uh, different disgusting things would happen and Ramon would have to clean up. And it got to the point, Fred, we hated it so much that we'd all walk around and just go, Ramon. Ramon. Uh, so uh, Jimmy took it to the next level and now he uh, fucks with some of our guests by it. Uh, Saying uh, he's doing, Steve from Yellowstone. Yeah, and he does the bit uh, for the person that was so for, for the person that's in studio, and the person has no clue where it came from. Laughed out loud in the office. That was hilarious. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Fred. Hey, I I know that he's spooning with little Boy Scouts. All right. Thank you. Let's say hi to Tom. Tom, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey man. Tom. I got a story about diving in the Bahamas uh, last year. We do a lot of diving, and we go to Stewart's Cove in Nassau, Bahamas. And uh, we were on a dive trip, and my buddy and I were in the water, and we went out over a drop-off, drops off about 5,000 feet, and we were about 120 feet down, and I got my back to the open water, and he's looking at me, and he gets this sheer look of terror on his face to the point where he can't even lift his arms, and he's pointing at me, trying to point at me, and I turn around, and there's this 30-foot whale shark about five feet from the back of my head, just swimming by. That's, and uh, he tur- I turned around to find him, and he's on his way up to the surface already, you know, because he couldn't, uh, I guess he freaked out, couldn't deal with the, the well, map. Aren't, aren't uh, whale sharks, like, as big as... Uh... They're huge, but they don't hurt you. No, they're actually vegetarians. They don't eat, uh, all they eat is plankton. And, yeah, you know, but when you uh, see something like that in the water yeah. when you're diving, it doesn't yeah, matter. I mean, you, you know, you hear stories about it. we got a lot of dives, and you hear stories about them, and the average sizes are, you know, 20 to 30 feet. And they get as big as 45, 50 feet. Uh, when you get when you get one close enough to where you can pretty much reach out and touch it, I don't care how many stories you hear. You know, it gets pretty. Uh, no, pretty I don't care what it is. There <laughs> s- shouldn't be stuff the size of dinosaurs uh, around it you. Would, 
It was fucking huge, and the only thing that compared to that was a, was a manta ray swimming at us with a mouth the size of uh, a Volkswagen. You know, which is another thing that doesn't eat you, but you could easily crawl inside this thing, this open. You have any stories about there. animals that could eat you that <laughs> swam towards you? Uh, actually, and this forty-pound goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, actually, we're going when I say that. this thing was puckering as it came <laughs> at us, I mean, I thought I was going to have a hickey from my forehead to my waist. <laughs> <laughs> I know they can't eat you, but still, still we're, we're scared. Going Arcadia, we're going to Arcadia, Maine. Six Main, fathoms. Does, <laughs> we're going to Arcadia, Maine, where this guy does uh, great white diving inside a cage. So I don't know. I'll call back. At, I'll call back or not after that happens. All right. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Bye. I don't, I don't care if it doesn't eat meat. In that situation, you're pretty scared. Absolutely. Of course. It's just, it's just that, that he went to another out. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, that's why uh, I stay in the house these days. Rob in New Jersey? I don't yeah, like how you woods. doing? Hey, Rob. How you doing? Yeah, uh, every man for himself. I live in West Milford, and uh, we had a bear in our yard. I seen the thing. I took off, and I pushed my girl out of the way. <laughs> that's a relationship ender right there. Yep, I'm telling you, though, everyone has that point, though, in them <laughs> where it's every man for themselves. What is it? Freaky. Everyone should think about it today. What? How far... Th- do you have to go in a situation no. before you're like, all right, it's every man for themselves? I knew, I knew when we were lost that, I, and I was hanging on by by my fingernails to my sanity. I was like, if I just completely lose my mind, it's a relationship ender. You, you got were still thinking about your relationship on the. I would have been yeah. Just like that's what I'm saying. What you know? No, I was still thinking about it. It's like no, you know, I, if I just you know, like a lunatic. Ripping my hair out, running down the trail. I've got to get out of here. You know, it's over, Johnny. You don't go back home and go, so, Poopsie, what's on tonight? You know, pick up the remote. You know, you don't do that after yeah. you just lose your mind like that. So That's when you get the uh, we need to take a break speech. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was one of those situations where, you know, you got to try your best not to yeah, throw her in the path of a bear. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, you know. I can climb this, you can't go fuck yourself kind of thing. No of arguments in the woods? No, there weren't. We were very quiet. Honey, come on! Oh, there was no talking? No, it was just because if we talked, I think the subject would have come up like, people die like this. This is great. This is what you read about, you know? So we just kept uh, kept walking. We found the big drippy water tree and was like, uh, oh, hey, we should drink some of this. And, you know. You were Harry Potter. that. It was you found the big drippy water. Big tray. drippy water tree. No, it was. Uh, it, it, thank God. It, at first, we were just finding like leaves with little like thimble full of water in it. If you were lucky, Ugh. and you'd have to do that like twenty times to get anything. You go a day without water? No. Yeah. no. Very thirsty. Come on. <laughs> thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> but then we found the, the tree, and for some somehow this tree would channel the water down. Uh, to uh, a few of the branches, and then just come pouring off the tree. Mm. I was like, "Ooh, that is good." Another and day, and like out there, you would have been praying to that tree. You would have told I, you I, it would have been like, yeah, the god, the just mud smeared all over us, <laughs> killing people that come near the tree, <laughs> <laughs> making spears. <laughs> all right. Hey, remember the Laszlo movie trailer from yesterday? Of course. Well, the listeners have started making their own Opie and Anthony movie trailers. Thank God. I'm sure they're all hysterically funny, well-produced. They sound great. No? Why? <laughs> <laughs> we'll play a few of them in just a few minutes here. Stay there. Well, the big guest for today's program was Rich Voss and his lovely wife, Bonnie. Blown off, huh? They are now married. And, uh... And he's dodging her. They're an hour late. That was the big guess for today. We have more people blow off this program. I can't even count that every day. Gene Simmons. All right. (laughs) Right. Rock legend. (laughs) Rich Voss. Yeah. Big drop off. Reality star. (laughs) Big drop off. But a good friend of ours. Haywood uh, Jablomi, that old gag from Whack Bag. Opie, great idea. Just answering that question would be a relationship ender. You love to start trouble, don't you? Oh, what? Uh, when, when? When's the line? Yeah, every man for themselves. And Dennis C. from New York, very pissed off. Opie, homo. I would never get to that point. I've been married for 10 years. I love my wife more than life itself. I would die first. F you. All she right. was looking over his shoulder as he typed that. You think? It's like, relax, man. It was just a question. And another one I read was, uh, uh, you guys are faggots. 
uh, bears and sharks uh, scaring you. Bunch of faggots. Like, he's the tough oh, guy. Yeah. He's the guy that, you know, you know what I would have done? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's him. Yeah, you faggot. You just don't know how to handle those situations. Let me tell you about... Yeah, right. Sure. You're scared shitless. Hey, he doesn't know. Hey, you, you know what? You know what gets me uh, through those moments? Guns. If I yes. had a gun with me, I would have been fine. Would have been fine. I put so much you faith in, in firearms. You've been in, you would have been whistling tunes all night long. Yeah. In that lean tune. I would I I would have. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. I'd have slept. <laughs> I'd have slept fine. I'd have slept fine because I know if something would have happened, I heard some crackling going on. Boom. Oh. Unload it. I would have been out of ammo in the first ten minutes. Any sound I heard, I would have been walking around with the thing drawn the whole time. Look like the scene in Predator when they all just open up on what they think is the Predator. <laughs> Vegetation falling down. That's Bill Burr. <laughs> you're, you're a funny, funny. Guy, I love, uh, I love the firearms. Yeah. It gives me confidence that I'm not going to get killed in the woods. All right, let's get into this movie trailer thing. We've started a new bit. We'll see where it goes. Well, Laszlo started the bit. He did an Opie and Anthony movie trailer. The king of show prep, Laszlo. Wow. Making us all look dumb yesterday. I know. He's phoning people in England. He throws together production pieces. He's like, yeah, well, you know, I, I was there till 2 in the morning doing this one. Right. Jesus. Well, it still looks well rested. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in case you missed it, here's his movie trailer that he handed in yesterday mm -hmm. to this fine program. In 2002, darkness covered the land. The Catholic League is praising Infinity Broadcasting for canceling the Opie and Anthony show. And evil reigned supreme. Who, who, Robin? Until one day, they returned and all hell broke loose. Bullshit! Can you hear me? I'm Jim Norton and I'm on the radio. Shut up! One Wednesday, I picked up a guy in a dress and he sucked my dick. You just sit back and watch what happens next. Opie. Shut up, shut up. Anthony. Away with you. Away, away. Leave. Leave the fucking studio. Jim Norton. Every one of you is a time-wasting cocky. I will beat children about the head. And the ONA Army. Our fans are a bunch of jackasses. Three men leading an army from the pits of darkness. You are shit. You are worthless. We're all losing. I could give a fuck. Fighting the evil nemesis, poisoning the land. <laughs> you're a fucking, you're just a little scumbag, and I'll just spit in your fucking face. <laughs> I'd love to spit in your fucking face. Fuck him. And a battle that almost separated them forever. I'm an actor. You're insane. You don't know how a show works, and then you have these stupid opinions. I understand you're trying to do a radio show. We're not going to do that, you ass. Aw, oh, don't get all angry and yell. Jim, you're fucking pissing me off. Whatever. Holy shit. What happens when love pushes you over the edge? I gotta feel the tits. Nowhere to run. Who is this idiot on the radio? Nowhere to hide. You're shit out of luck. And no way out. Dance, motherfucker, dance. Yeah, look at my cock. The most anticipated thriller of the year. Give to me the money. I will make for you the like I fuck. Ah, no! The Opie and Anthony Show. Rated R for retarded. Wow. I want to see that movie. That is great. It's really, really good. My favorite part is Jimmy. Oh, it's and so that good. just I want to spit in your face. Just so angry. <laughs> That's the best thing in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, then we said, hey, listeners, why don't you start doing movie trailers? Great. We kind of did this with the jingle thing, and it, yeah. it worked out nice for us, right? Oh, this has got to be great stuff. So the uh, Opie and Anthony movie trailers are coming in, and they sound just like Laszlo's. <laughs> Same quality. Yeah. Well, here's the first one. By uh, Greg. Tony Show, Greg. <laughs> this is Ray from Deer Park. Uh, That's, the quality we, <laughs> That's the quality we get. Here's Ray from Deer Park, his movie trailer. In a world where a poor Irish kid finally gets a break. Oh, uh, right away. <laughs> what is that? In a world. Got a, can I, maybe? In a world. <laughs> wow. What are you using? Is that the Mr. Microphone you got there? Pally? 
Alright. In a world where a poor Irish kid finally gets a break. I'm Opie. I'm insecure of my own personality, so I got into radio. And an Italian immigrant gets a new job. I used to fix air conditioners, now I'm on the radio. And they allow a small time comedian to hijack their show. I'm Jim Norton. I distract Anthony by using the same joke every five seconds, and therefore make him less funny. And they blame all their troubles on one Jewish DJ. Hey, Anthony, let's rip off that hook-nosed bastard and start a radio war with them. Wow, that's a good idea, Opie. Opie and Anthony the movie. Wow. Coming this fall. Hey, anyone else want some spaghetti? <laughs> Holy First of all, shit, this is, is when you know awful. you're doing wow. a bad impression, is you have to say who you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Opie. His Anthony this and is Jim. Anthony. His, oh, his Anthony and Jim Norton were the exact same. Same impression. And, and neither of which sounded Anything. remotely like either of us. Well, maybe the next one's good. Whew. You guys didn't like that one? I don't think he liked us. <laughs> See, that's the kind of the vibe I got from that one. I think Ray's pissed off because I think he hands in a lot of stuff and we don't get to it usually. Obviously, uh, now we know why. So maybe he has turned on. Hey, us. Anthony, you want some spaghetti? <laughs> spaghetti? Because he's Italian. <laughs> and that's what they eat. All the time. <laughs> and I might be 5% Irish. Maybe. Maybe. Hi, I'm Opie. I'm Opie. Oh. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Come on. <laughs> I'm Opie. <laughs> you want some spaghetti? Uh, Jim Norton here, and um, I was with a hooker last night. <laughs> yeah, 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 jerk. Yeah. All right, well, the next Opie and Anthony movie trailer is from Slim Shitty. Slim Shitty. Yes. Okay. No plan. In a world full of pollution and high oil prices, one bear decided to take a stand on all fours. Wait, Steve's got a hybrid, which uh -huh. is just creepy on some level. What's wrong with the hybrid? It runs on water and honey and bee and <laughs> <laughs> To win over the environment, Steve had to give up his manhood. Are there that many pussies that want th that one hybrid? It's part vehicle, part carnivore. It's a quick little car. It doesn't go really fast. It goes maybe, I've had it up to about 95 miles an hour. Your Malata mongrel class of vehicle. One bear. What's wrong with the hybrid? One almost car. <laughs> hybrid and the bear. Hovering to an XM unit near you. I get the <laughs> <laughs> <A> hybrid. <laughs> that one's not bad. No, not too bad. At least they yeah, had like clips from the show. Yeah. So that way someone didn't have to go, I'm Opie. Yeah. <laughs> Yelling into a Campbell's soup can. <laughs> it was horrible. I know. I can't get that one out of my head. <laughs> but Hybrid and the Bear, that's pretty good so far. All right. Uh, the next one is from Bill. Bill who? Do we know? Not our mm -hmm. Bill, right? No one knows. Okay. Just a guy named Bill. In a world where radio mediocrity reigns. Holy sh I guess they all have to start. In a world. In a world. Yeah, Fast Freddy from Jamaica Station right, writes, In a world lacking of any talent. <laughs> <laughs> in a world. In a world where radio mediocrity reigns. Holy shit. One show has set a new standard for excellence. Born in the USA! Opie and Anthony, starring Opie. We'll be doing this all morning. <laughs> Anthony This idiot And sometimes co-starring little Jimmy Norton Hey Jimmy, how's that Roach Motel in Hollywood working for you, buddy? <laughs> and Steve the Flaming Fag Oh, thank you, Steve You're welcome Opie and Anthony and Very Tom good, Tom. Opie <laughs> Rated R for re fucking ridiculously funny On XM High Voltage 202 Hmm well, this is yeah. the start of the bit. It certainly is the start. I kind of liked Hybrid and the Bear. Sort of gives people a, a launching point. We got a Master Poe movie trailer by uh, Coke Logic from Whackbag. Master Poe. It's long, though. Where's Steve? Maybe we should talk to oh, Steve. Boy. We're going to get Steve. Travis gave the thumbs up. He says it's ah. good? Yeah. <laughs> Look at Than. <laughs> Did, Did you, you really? hear it, Than? No. Ah, okay. Because I, I would have assumed if you heard it. 
and said fans giving a thumbs up that it would have sucked because you would have been selling them out. And hello. Hey, Hi. Steve. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, the Master Poe trailer is uh, longer than most, but it's pretty good. Oh. For a listener promo, I should put that. Uh, There's kind of always thing. all these conditions yeah. put on any. People are so frightened <laughs> yeah. to really get behind something here on this show. You really don't yeah, add much with that hairy shit. You yeah, really, you yeah. really don't add much. What do you mean? We we take you out of your studio to come in to help the bit a little bit, and you're just like, yeah, it's pretty good. Well, what am I supposed to? I can't give it away. I don't want to really, you know, give the whole thing away without, right. you know, play it. Play it. I mean, it's not. It's 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 a listener promo, so it's not really up to snuff with what Laszlo, Laszlo did, but it's above par uh, considering a lot of these guys are sending in hissy drops and uh, audio they ripped off some uh, some website somewhere. How yeah. many have come in so far? <laughs> the four that you have. That's it so far. Yeah. Right. Well, after the ones we play today, you're gonna get it probably eight tomorrow. Great. I, I can't wait. I, well, I can't on wait. The ten new listeners. Yeah. And then sixteen. And new listeners. Thirty-two. Right. Then. 64. I think and Bill so should preview on, these. And so on. And so on and so on. All right, Steve. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem. All right. There he goes, Steve. Oh, he must be really busy. Oh, oh, wait. How did that happen? He started. You notice how his eyes, like, left when he, gets, idling. he, he leaves, leaves him shut? Yeah. That nervous um, reaction? I don't want to uh, look at people. All right, here it is. Send in promos. The next Opie and Anthony movie trailer. It's about Master Poe. In a world of (laughs) mystery. Oh, boy. (laughs) Always in a world, isn't it? In a world. (laughs) Yeah, but it's not that inaccurate. Most movie promos start with that. (laughs) They really do, yeah. Uh, In a world. (laughs) In a world. In a world of mystery. (laughs) Who wrote the note about Master Poe uh, throwing out some bloody clothes? Bloody clothing? Like the top half of a karate uniform? It was just covered in blood. Would you like to hear the truth? There was blood on the gate. In a world of deceit. In a comedy shop, there's bars. I, I drink while I drive. Oh, my body rock! I have a reputation. My reputation is is extremely important to me. Uh, you do say that he uh, drives drunk. And Only when going by children. Yeah. In a world of fear. To clear this up, yes. Opie was telling me about the situation concerning the guard downstairs. And I thought that was more important than soap. Coming soon. All right, I wanted so to make sure... Are you going to kick the guard's ass for us? Uh, no, I will not do that. However, I'll make sure that he doesn't get... When do you points. get to kick ass? No, when someone comes in and physically goes towards me. It's body language and, and also yeah. their eyes. What style have you taken? Okanaon, Kempo, Karate, Shotokan, Karate, Shun, Karate. What form? Master Poe goes from silent assassin to sleepy assassin. Someone wake up Master Poe. Someone wake him up. Get we Master Poe back to reality. Master Poe, how do we wake him up? Master Poe, wake up. Master Poe. Oh, I understand, the, Master Poe. Get out of the zone. Oh, holy. Master Poe goes to another place. He just wow. zones out. Ran out of gas. It was really good, but then you need the In the World guy to come back. Yeah, he ran out of gas on that in one. And, and then name the movie. The yeah. Master Poe movie or whatever. Yeah. All Not right. bad. It's a good start to the bit. Yes. The other hack thing it's that they do people. is, there, you know, when the country was at its knees, <laughs> he brought us to our feet. <laughs> Sometimes the only way to go forward <laughs> is to go back. Go back. Ugh, Ugh is right. This <laughs> you know, movie sucks. <laughs> in a world. All right. They also, uh, a while back, a big one was, in a small town. There's always that, that one. time for God. <laughs> Let's go to Mr. Hughes. Mr. Oh. Hughes. Yeah, what the fuck was up with that first trailer, man? Was that the guy from Silence of the Lamp? It puts the audio in the fucking basket. It does this when it's pulled. What the fuck is that guy trying to do, man? Sound like he was trying to fucking... Trying, sound like he was trying to be like the guy from Silence of the Lamp. Wait, he was trying to be like what? He's trying to be like the guy from Silence of the Lamp. Who was in that? Fuck, I don't know. I never seen, seen the movie. I just heard these... Oh, and they play in the... And how would you know he's trying to be like the guy if you never seen the movie? And what movie was it again? Because your phone keeps crapping out. Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> 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 
more. <laughs> God. <laughs> Did you hear how he knew he was bombing and kept talking? And he just kept going back. To, so he yeah. got Science of the Lambs. Science blah, of the blah, Lambs. Blah, 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 nothing. You know, because Science of the Lambs, dude, it's over. <laughs> he did the put it in the basket line. It flopped. Hey, you know what we haven't talked about yet? <clears throat> what? What we were talking about in the office, about Tara Reid and all that. All right. Her show, uh, Terrible. What is it called? Paradise. Paradise? Yeah. Terrifying. Oh, it's so bad. It's it's it's, Ooh, it's, it's the old Wild On uh, show they used to do yeah. on E. Same thing. Where but they now send it's Tara Reid, Wild On E or whatever. Yeah, and Brooke Burke used to talk all the time, you know, and do like the whole segments. And she's so bad. They they I have like 17 montages, and they'll just come to her, you know, this is where life began. And she's like, "Wow, you guys, that's amazing. That's crazy. This is insane." I took a I took a peek the other day. I couldn't believe how awful she looked. And she she won't do anything either. This is like no. Paris saying, "I'm no, that's crazy." You guys. Yeah, she's in like these faraway places, and she's supposed to participate in some activities, and she doesn't. No, she won't. She won't. But the two she... episodes I've seen, anything that they're doing, she was supposed to run with the bulls. No. No. I was I was gonna, and then I was just like, I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's like, how are you building a show around this? Oh, God. And then she'll laugh like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Camel oh. unfilters. Yeah, she's known for just smoking like crazy, and she had that that um. What? How do they? What do they call that voice when they want it to sound like it's something sexy? Oh, that smoky voice. Yeah, no, Demi Moore the, yeah. description. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a way you put it uh, that sounds sexy, and maybe when you know a few years back uh, when she was doing those American Pie movies, I guess it was kind of cute. Now it's just reached a point where it it really reminds me of Lucille Ball in her final years when she used to do Carson. <laughs> Remember you watch I Love Lucy as a kid and she was like, Ricky, uh, we got to have Mrs. Trumbull watch uh, little Ricky and I'll, I'll meet you at the club later. And that was Lucy. And then like six this, years later, six years go by. She's on a talk show. Well, you know, <laughs> me and Viv, when we invented the sitcom, we uh, we uh, never really got along with Bill Frawley. <laughs> when me and Desi started Desi Lu Studios, like what? What happened to her voice? She'd be on those talk shows with a drink and a cigarette. The drink no clinking, problem. clink clink. Oh, Johnny, <laughs> <laughs> just drinking and smoking. That is and uh, th that's definitely the road Tara Reid has taken. She's not going to be able to talk. The emphysema. <laughs> yeah, they all get wound up getting it back then. Uh, uh, she died of it. Ricky, I remember seeing um, Desi Arnaz on a Saturday Night Live episode, like right before he died. Yeah. He uh, he was on. I don't know. Did he host it? I think, I think he was a host. And uh, just ravaged by the sea, the big uh, casino got his lungs because they were always smoking in the office we were talking about the episodes of i love lucy where uh they would do placement product placement for philip morris that was a cigarette company that sponsored the show and uh lucy would offer people cigarettes that came over the house in a candy dish full of cigarettes that were on on the table of a, t <laughs> it's a tv show <laughs> they'd be like wafts of smoke on the set you know the play the whole studio probably just stunk the set had nicotine dripping down the wall have to squeegee off the camera lens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Tara Reid's starting to sound like, uh... Ah, Mr. Mooney. <laughs> going We're down. here in Pampelona, Spain. Oh, ah. <laughs> I'm not going to run with the bulls. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Guys. Uh, well, I think we have some Tara audio here. Yeah. Let's listen to this. Water activities. I went on this other rap thing, it was called a fly fish, and it's like this thing where everyone kind of lays down in, in it, and it just flies up in the air, and me and Paris are screaming like, ah! We're so scared. It was so high that I thought it was going to flip over the other way. <laughs> Oh my god, honestly, we really hurt each other. And I think my leg is 
I have black and blues on my legs right here. It's crazy, but it's so much fun. Crazy. We did every water sport you could possibly imagine. We burnt more calories than doing word activities and not even around here. It's like we worked out for an hour. We do this every day and we rip. Wow. People are watching this shit. She's got one of those voices that just around every spit where it stopped talking. <laughs> then we went on this thing. It's called the fly. It's fantastically fun. We, like a voice just cuts out. <laughs> it's like a cell phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> here we are in Australia. It's wonderful. We're by the great reef. <laughs> <laughs> Just cuts out. Uh, not getting a signal. Good signal. <laughs> uh, sultry, people are saying the voice is called. Sultry. Sultry. Sure. Mike on Long Island. What's up, Mike? Hey, I caught a glimpse that I showed the other day. It is the most full show on TV. All she talked about is, is how, uh, how, how exclusive the she's getting into, and she re- you gotta hear the refer to herself in person. This is the Tara zone, or the re- This is like re- exclusive. Uh, it's the most- Hey, stop it's ripping off Anthony. Anthony, uh, yeah, came right? up with the voice that just, you know, craps out. His phone. It's, He's got Tara it's, voice, it's, voice it's, phone. Uh, Alright, Mike, thank you. Here's another clip. This is hysterical. My camera crew comes in, and then, all these other camera crews and like flashes everywhere. We're like, what is going on? It all happened at once. And Paris and Paris were like, wow, she has a big crew. Say hi to the camera. I'm sitting there like, who are all these people? It all happened so quick. There's like eight cameras, 25 paparazzi all around the table, and it was just like, whoa. That's your only camera. Paris. Paris, that's the only camera allowed in. You know, and then finally we got everyone else out, but we kept ours in. They figured it out. The bodyguard just figured it out. <laughs> you nailed the voice, uh, man. She's got it, and, and, oh. She tells the worst story. Yeah. And like, it kind of, and it's, it's like, we were like, wow. <laughs> like, I got awesome. We got a bigger crew in Paris Hilton. <laughs> 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 Who cares? <laughs> Wasn't the whole thing with the original show is that she, it was her going to b- b- bars? Like party locations? Yeah. And then what, do they run out of bars? Because now she, they try to make it make make it more than it really is. <laughs> where she's actually trying to get culture some of these places. I have no idea. Oof. Oh, my God. 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 Oh my god. I've never in my life tasted anything better. Like, we were flipping out. It was sick. It was amazing. It was so, so good. She has like three <laughs> adjectives in her whole vocabulary. Sick. It was amazing. So, so good. I mean, it was just as so, so good. You need a show to have somebody tell you how delicious some food product was? I didn't, That's what she's talking about. I never realized her voice was so fucked up. Oh, raspy. The other thing is, it, it all of a sudden just speeds up out of nowhere. Yeah. She uh she loves the cigarettes is what it is. She must be a mess to like wake up in the morning for the next show. Just picture sprawled out on the bed in some hotel room, <laughs> like jizz on the sheets and just reeking of smoke. Jizz in her hair. Everything she owns must just reek of cigarette smoke. <laughs> just her hair all in disarray, her face all swollen from the night partying. What? Uh, uh, I need another hour. No, call me later. I got sleep. <laughs> Punching the mirror, getting in a karate fight. Saigon. I can't believe I'm still in Saigon. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Viet Cong came in from the north. I was like, wow. <laughs> this is the end. First and ninth air cab, yeah. air mobile. <laughs> uh, I was gonna blow this off, but we we have to hear more of her. Uh, <laughs> it's horrible of her speech. Oh, I'm over. No, Paris and Paris couldn't have been any kinder. You know, they just took us in and showed us the other side of Greece that we wouldn't have ever gotten to know. We were dancing and singing together. I mean, there's just so much love there. Paris and Paris, they're truly I think it's beautiful. Truly what? Paris, Paris, they're truly just. <laughs> truly just beautiful. She hacks up a tumor. <laughs> I think people are going to see I'm not just a party girl, but I care about people. And I'm kind of goofy and I have a funny side to me, too. And ah! It's insane. What is that? That's the Acropolis, and the main building is the Parthenon. And what is that? This is a monument from the. So is he one of the gods? 
like Hercules. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's okay. be fabulous. This is the real thing. It was the golden age of Pericles, built uh, 2,500 years ago. So he was a guy? Yes. See, I'm confused. Did you know this? <laughs> You guys don't know either, so don't, don't no, make me look no really idea. Super. He was the guy that built that, right? Like he was like the governor right. back then. So that's how the markers started. Is he the guy um, that did the thing with the potatoes? He was like, right? That guy was a leader. He ruled Greece and there was no potatoes. Anyone the economy would be better. Uh, uh, I'm learning way too much stuff. <laughs> Is that like when the ruins were? Exactly. That okay, was... see? I'm getting smarter by the minute. It was wow. one of the birthplaces of civilization, and it was amazing. Amazing. We should stick to the good plug. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the plug. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where to say that. Jessica's <laughs> right now. <laughs> She's looking like a rock scientist. Holy. What? I don't know. We need, we need a I, translation. I, I'm learning too much stuff. I, I Trying to get a history lesson. I don't think that part of the show is very good. <laughs> Do you hear the sound effects? They actually make fun of it because... Yeah. Boing! <laughs> She's so stupid. See, like the one with the potatoes? Yeah, the one with the potatoes. Because I, I know that it was a leader, and he has uh, people, and the uh, the guy, they ran out of potatoes, and I got to get some more potatoes. Is that the guy? Uh, is that the guy? Uh, hey, is it, give me a fucking drink. <laughs> <laughs> I need a drink. Oh. Uh, fabulous. Yeah, Justin, Tennessee, what's up? Not much. What's going on, fellas? You hey, tell us. Okay. I'm wondering, are the networks just looking for the biggest idiots to do these shows nowadays? Yes, pretty much. Because, okay. I mean, MTV has Ashley Simpson, and she's the biggest no-talent ass clown I've seen ever. Uh, and, I mean, Tara Reid, they just put a camera in front of her and a drink in her hand and call it a show. TV is all about just finding uh, train wrecks now. Uh, you guys watch The Surreal way. Life? Yeah. With Janice Dickinson. Did you see the one where, uh, who's the dude from Perfect Strangers? I don't know. The Balky. Balky. <laughs> starts <laughs> called Bronson Pinchot. Where he starts fan. crying? No, really? Holy Missed that one. crap, I laughed so fucking hard. I know, he's a fucking pervert. There's all sorts of drama in the in the house, right? Between her and that, that fake bitch, uh, Amorosa, whatever, uh -huh. from The Apprentice. She has to be all edgy and like she'll say anything, but you can tell That's she's, her character. she's a big phony. So she has it out with Janice, whatever. And uh, so Janice goes off to another room, and uh, she admits to Balky that, that her father was a pervert or a pedophile or something. Mm -hmm. And so it made for a horrendous, uh, you know, childhood. Yeah. And she's getting into it with Balky, and she's crying as she's, like, admitting this huge thing. Yeah. And what does Balky do instead of comfort her? He openly starts crying harder than she was. I think he was trying to get into her pants that way. I was laughing so hard when Tough this came sell, on. But when this came on done TV. Done correctly. We got to get the we got to get the audio of that because it was really really funny. Yeah. And then they have to console him when it was all about, you know, they they should be consoling this, you know, Janice girl because she was going That's great. going through this moment, but Balky was overcome by the whole thing. Maybe it brought back some kind of childhood memory of something that uh -oh. happened to him cuz he now loses it and and they can't uh, calm him down. Yeah. He probably's like, "Oh, she's stealing the scene." Yeah. She's going to get the award. She's getting more attention. Yeah. Got to make this about me. We have Tara Reed on the phone. Tara. Hi, boys. Hey, Tara. <laughs> wow, you sound sexy with that voice. What's up, Tara Reed? Well, I was out all night partying with Tara. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, a bunch of my, what, my friends were telling me you guys were talking about me. Um, so what's going on? <laughs> what's up, Tara? I like when they call that have no material. <laughs> no. Yeah. Hi, it's Tara Reed. Again, having to say who it is and then... <laughs> Well, it was. It had potential. Yeah. One more clip. Oh from my God. Tara. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah, we like to eat dinner at least three times a day. <laughs> yeah, we can tell. I'm gonna be a monster by the end of it. Say hello. I need to honestly get my mouth stapled and just talk out of a straw. That's all I do is what? eat. I'm getting fatter by the second. I'm gonna eat a girl. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get me in a bikini. I'm just a monster now. I told myself that. Have you ever seen me this big in your life? I have no idea what she said. And uh, she just laughed. About being fat, it. bikini. I, yeah, oh, I think it's fat like. Bikini if we keep eating, I'm going to get huge in my bikini. I'm not going to be able to fit into it. <laughs> but yeah, because I keep eating, I'm going to have to get my mouth there and eat through a straw. She didn't even say that. She said, breathe through a straw. <laughs> I, I don't know. Talk through a straw. It's like, isn't it getting your jaw wired shut? 
and eating through a straw. She was like getting my mouth stapled and talking through a straw. <laughs> she gets everything wrong. She was confusing Greek mythology with the potato famine. <laughs> and then the god Apollo needed french fries and he couldn't find any. So he had like get this, a Parasophocles guy and, and he came down and actually got them um, curly fries. That's you amazing. Dope. What adult. <laughs> That's I fucking that's unbelievable. Bad. I can't book anything. And she she's on television. Into the audition. You got to be a train wreck, Bill. Oh, yeah, I just got this ad yesterday. I didn't have this in there. I, you guys. <laughs> she's on TV. There on it is. TV. God has a show. People talk about it. People watch it. Encore. One more clip. Of course. Oh. Talking about food. More food. What is going on with the potatoes and the bread? I mean, guys, are you trying to make me fat by the second? I'm not eating them. But it's not good. My ass is jiggling. You can't starve yourself and be like a, a typical actress that doesn't eat and do a movie that we did because it was too intense. Do you know what I mean? So, literally, you ate what you could. So, we ate stuff just for energy, but it was food. So, we got fat. Yeah, head the lot. But we'll get it off. Here, you passed the Greek salad. That's really good. It's them eating and talking about getting fat. Getting fat from that eating good shitty TV, food. Honey. That like, the movie is like so intense. So I, I did American Pie. It's the dry place that I had to go as an actress. It's so hard to eat food here. It's so shitty food. I got fat. You know, it was different on the set of uh, my motion picture, Josie and the Pussycats. We had such great food there. Uh, now it's such horrible food. <laughs> Uh, Michael Jordan from Alabama writes, Tara Reid actually said uh, rock scientist instead of rocket scientist. Rock scientist? Yeah, I did hear that. Fantastic. Rock scientist. She is the greatest. All right. I'm looking forward to uh, the next program. We need more Tara clips. Yeah. Please put that on the list. You want to do some Tara things? <laughs> yeah. All right, Tara clips on the way for you, Anthony. <laughs> Tara clips. There you go. Who the hell was that? <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Whose stomach just growled? Was that yours? Yeah, but... But you've been eating granola. It was really low, though. That wasn't my stomach. That was... <laughs> that was one of those internal farts. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, you ever get that? Yeah, it doesn't get... Doesn't it's like, out. you know your intestine... Uh, <laughs> this is a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't talked about farts in a few so days. There's Here gas we go, behind. Because your intestine is a bunch of, like, muscles, just right. like your sphincter... Only it's it's like uh, on the whole length of it, and that pushes everything down. So when you get gas in there, uh, and and the gas squeezes through one of these closed sphincter muscles, it sounds exactly like a fart. Only it's inside. Right. And sometimes it could sound exactly like a fart, but like not, muffled from the sheets or something. But no one's going to be bothered by it. Right. Because it just stinks inside you. I got a fart was inside me. Yes, yes. And just, that was amazing. And they were looking at me. I was like, you guys. I, I, was, I was with this guy once, and all of a sudden, I, I thought I had a fart, and it was inside fart. And it almost came out. And then I did fart, and it came out as a smoke ring. And everyone laughed and laughed. And I didn't know I could blow smoke rings. And I fired in the last cigarette I had was like 15 minutes ago, and I still had a smoke ring. It was great. <laughs> Derek and the gang are loving the new impression, oh. the new Anthony impression. Paul, who knew you could do Tara, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Horrible whore. All right. Want to take a break? All righty. You know, it kind of sucks because... Uh, I can't believe Voss didn't show up Yeah, today we were counting on Rich Voss and Bonnie, so Not so again, much for him. Once again, your pals are going to have to make up uh, more radio. We'll show uh, how brilliant we really are once again. Because there's nothing else to really talk about. We did the, we did the latest on Katrina. We did the thing on Rita. Uh, there's nothing else here to talk about, really. All right, we'll see you tomorrow at seven. Uh, <laughs> no? wow. Barry Bonds at a homer last night. Oh. All right. Uh, hockey started last night. The regular season? No, just like. Preseason stuff. Preseason. Hockey sucks now. No, it's going to get better. On XM Satellite Radio. <laughs> <I'll see. laughs> you better love hockey, Bill, if you want. No, I did, back before all the teams moved out of Canada and went down south. Hmm, good point. I'm sorry. 
You know what? It's a great game. <laughs> uh, another lesson about radio. Actually, no, I heard they uh, they took away the red line and stuff, so it's going to open up the uh, neutral oh, zone. There it's you go. Up the neutral zone right. and try to beat the left. You no know, more left wing lock. Yeah. No more two line passes. Sometimes things you can't stand have to be the best thing in the world on radio because they are the ones that pay bills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely am not talking about GameFly.com though. Because oh, I am a gamer. We love GameFly.com. Yes. I need to pick up a new game, matter of fact. You know what you do? You go to GameFly.com. You find the game. You order it. You can check it out. You like it? What do you do? You click Keep It in your game queue. And then they send you the mint condition box, the manual, everything you would get if you bought it in the store at a discount. You get a membership uh, discount on that one. And then you don't have a stack of games that stink because you went out and bought them and realized they sucked. That's what I got at home. I got a big stack of games that just stink. Gamefly.com slash XM. Get yourself signed up. Twenty one ninety five a month. Uh, but you can uh, start with two free week with a free two week <laughs> XM trial. I can't talk today. No commitments. Cancel anytime. Start playing the latest releases. All the games you've wanted to play at Gamefly.com. Over 2,500 titles to choose from. All the platforms. Xbox, PS2, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, DS, and the new PSP. Two games at a time. No shipping either way. Keep the games as long as you want. No uh, late fees. All the games you want right there at Gamefly.com. That's Gamefly. They have it spelt out here like they want me to say. G-A-M-E-F-L-Y dot com. Mm-hmm. Who can't spell Gamefly dot com? Slash XM. And then you plug in XM in the promo code box for your special offer. It's Gamefly dot com. All right. Before we go to break, we have Tara Reed calling back. Oh. Yes, Tara. Hey, guys. How you doing? I just say hi to my friend Ray Romano. Ray, you there? Yeah, come on. Oh, my God. Ray, it's not so crazy. Remember the night, the night we went out to the club and I had a club in my hand and we were doing a club thing? No. <laughs> Sometimes when I eat too much food, Ray Romano goes crazy. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do either. Right, Ray? Oh, what are you doing? Stop Ray, talking so about crazy. that. Oh, God. I don't want to say you, Ray. Crazy guy. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> and he punched out. <laughs> Ah, very good. You could now go down to the UCB and uh, just be a star. A little improv like that. Yeah, I know. Do a little Ray Romano. The amazing thing you ever. Get into their little click. You won't just be a stand-up anymore. I have as much like ability to do Ray as Tara has knowledge of like Europe. <laughs> Potatoes got, and <laughs> Greek she mythology. Has three I got no. Potatoes and Greek mythology. <laughs> she mixed up the potato famine with Greek mythology. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh. Ah, you're checking out the Opie and Anthony program on this fine whip em out Wednesday. Do you have your wow stickers yet? We're making them every single day. All you have to do is send a self-addressed stamped envelope off to us here in New York City. We'll send out the wow stickers immediately. Little sweatshop of children hand painting them. That's right, in the back Somewhere office. In Thailand. <laughs> They're making Nike sneakers and uh, whip them out Wednesday wow stickers. bumper stickers. So mm-hmm. nickel a day. And then you throw the wow stickers on your car or your truck, and uh, this has worked great for many, many years. There's a lot of ladies out there that are that are slut bags, and uh, what happens is they they flash you because they see the wow in your car. They're lovely women. No, we know that, and they know that. They know we're just joking. Just to be edgy, because we're shock, 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 shocking. Shocking. And we haven't been too shocking yet today. So uh, if you want a, a wow sticker, yeah, self-addressed stamped envelope. The address is 111 West 57th Street, New York, New York, 10019. Nice. Wow, you know it now. And that uh, that address is up on opianthony.com if you need it, okay? I never know the zip here. Like, if I got to fill out a form that says place of work and you put the address down, I just leave it out. I mean, yeah. New York, New York, you figure it out. And we should have a WOW hotline in time for, you know, next spring, I guess. Yeah, because WOW season's only uh, so long. Well, now that we're all over the country, it'll be WOW every single day somewhere. Yeah, well, okay. Arizona? <laughs> <laughs> that old gag. The old... <laughs> it's 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> All right, shut up. Like when people say that, like 15 past the hour. It's noon somewhere. No, it isn't. It's a quarter afternoon somewhere. <laughs> they say that at the bars when you, when you have want to, to drink. When you have to use that excuse to drink at like 10, 15 in the morning, you're an alcoholic. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. It's happy hour somewhere. 
<laughs> that drunk. <laughs> Just drink. Yeah, and he's, he's doing, doing it that every day. Hack phrase too. Yeah, which means inevitably you're gonna put the lampshade on your head <laughs> to show how wacky you are. <laughs> this guy's a scream, man. Hang with him all the time. Hey, uh, you guys were bringing up a pretty good point. Um, you know, Hurricane Rita is uh, slowly but surely making her way to the Texas coast. Uh huh. And I mean slowly but surely. Yeah. yeah Bill was saying earlier. He goes, I, they're showing this in real time, and it sounded like a joke, but no. Uh, the news channels, no matter what story they're doing, in the corner, they'll put a picture, the satellite picture of the hurricane, mm -hmm. just on a loop, scrolling and uh, spinning in the Gulf, like we need to see it constantly until it hits something. I think it's it's moving three miles an hour. Yeah. It's a hurricane in real time. <laughs> it's not the most exciting thing to watch on They've television. They've already done the, the, the hacky uh, palm tree blowing in the wind. Yeah, yeah. the oh, reporter yeah. in front of it. The reporter in front on, of uh, it, the it, driving it, rain. It ran right between Cuba and uh, the Keys. So they had their reporters down there, of course, with the wind blowing. Uh, and, well, at uh, least, you know, they know it's coming. They got plenty of... Yeah. Well, then they got the shot inside the grocery store with all the empty shelves because you got to get ready for the hurricane. Getting ready. We're up to a Cat 4. Winds 131 to 155 miles an hour. That's what it is. And they say, Opie, this could reach... Category 5 and uh, smack into Galveston is what it's aiming at. Um, I saw where Galveston is. You see that? It's a little strip of land off of Texas. And they were talking with an evacuee from New Orleans that went to Galveston. Why, would, why wouldn't you just take a little effort, go a little more inland? You're I've, on a strip. I've always liked the water. Yeah. <laughs> I like the water. I'm not going to let it scare me away. Let it scare let you. Let it scare you away. This, it's chasing you now. You should be scared. Run. Get out of there. Stop being so brave. But uh, at, le at least you. in this day and age, Opie, we're in, what, 2005, uh, you can see the satellite picture of a hurricane constantly. Mm. It's not sneaking up on anybody. Who would think something uh, 500 miles wide could sneak up on people, but it did back in the olden days. Do you imagine what it was like? Because we didn't have satellite photos. There weren't weather forecasters that could tell there was a hurricane coming. It was just some schlep sitting uh, in his little, uh, what, what, log cabin? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's going to rain. Yeah. Well, it was so nice a little earlier, but there's a few clouds moving in. I think I'm going to have to postpone uh, seating the uh, the back 40. And uh, then out of nowhere, the w maybe the wind picks up a little, and the you've rain. been through a lot of storms, the so it's probably, like, ooh, this could be a bad one. Oh, you read those old books, too, and you had to, like, tie yourself to a tree? Yeah. And but when it, after the eye passes over, you're, like, naked. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just ripped everything off of you. <laughs> There's nothing left. And then it hits, and, and you're like, oh, boy, this is like something... Uh, I can't even say from a movie because it's the 1800s. You had to be in a hurricane to know there was a hurricane To know coming. what this was There's like. No meteorology. Right. There's nothing that can uh, tell these people what it was like. Just out of nowhere. Yeah, and it hasn't, yeah, it, it, it hasn't been figured out yet. So what are the people thinking back then? An act of God. Yeah, they must have just ran to the church. crazy thing like that, right? That promptly collapsed on top of all of them, killing everybody. <laughs> that church-like mercy. Sure. Yeah. All right, so we're following uh, Hurricane Rita in real time. In now, real time, on and CNN. It's not supposed to make any kind of landfall until Saturday afternoon, or Saturday morning, early Saturday morning. Saturday, 2 a.m. And it's um, Wednesday. <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> Friday. It's 24-hour oh. fucking coverage. Yeah, it's uh, they got it in a pretty straight track, curving a little north. I would like to see it take a northerly turn a little sooner, which would have it barreling into New Orleans. Nah, New Orleans is safe. Who doesn't want to see this hit New Orleans? It's starting to move even like west of Galveston. It it's the like, sequel right? we've all wanted. It's like, it's like when they made the Matrix Part Two and Three back to back at the same time, so you could see it like really quickly in the theater. You don't have to wait a couple of years for the movie. That's what I like. A quick sequel. Yeah, the first one's already on like on demand. <laughs> yeah, but sequels <laughs> suck. This is like Caddyshack. That's actually too. good. There's been, there's been a couple of good. Like, very few. They're starting to get better, finally. In recent years, the sequel yeah. has. 
That's because they film them all at the same time. It's got the same feel of the continuing storyline. Like Lord of the Rings. Has you, a part three to anything that? ever been good? Uh, very rarely, yeah. Oh, what about The Godfather? Godfather, I mean, come on. Godfather. <laughs> part three. Stung. That was worse than Jaws 3. <laughs> Jaws 3. Because that was 3D, wasn't it? Yeah. They had to do the 3, 3D. And then the 4 was like, now it's personal. She was being uh, the wife there. Brody's wife was the star. She was the last one left and the star. And... uh and uh, the shark was pretty much chasing her. That's when you know it's going to suck when the, even the people from the original cast, nobody's left, and they're like out of work, and they're still like, no. I'm, yeah, they said no. No, I'm not doing Jaws 9. And the worst person in the movie, the one that had like nothing in the first movie, she's the big star in the in the, the part four. And the shark was chasing her. Now, wouldn't... That's pretty easy thing to get away from. <laughs> Just you move go, to Arizona. Arizona? I could say you could still live within sight of a beach and be fine. Oh, good point. You could, you could taunt the shark. Right. You could fuck with him. What was the reasoning that she had to be in the water? Or the whole movie would fall apart, of course. I, of course she had to go in the water. I don't remember. Does anyone know? That was the big like sticking point when they were writing that awful script. How do we get her in the water? Gotta get her. There's gotta be a reason. God, she's petrified of it. Her whole she family. Wants, she's she wants to take a kayak. A kayak. Get the shark. Everyone she knew was pretty much killed by the by the shark, but she had to go in the water for some reason. Did she have to like uh, get the demons out of her? Oh, like confront uh, confront her demons. Confront it and perhaps. Now I need to know why she did had Brody it in the water. ever die? Did Brody ever die from the shark? Jaws the Revenge. No, he like died uh, of a heart attack, I think. But she always blamed it on the stress of the shark and like the Not son the got script. killed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Didn't have to go down that road if they had a good script. He would have. He would have made the movie. A man-eating shark. Let's see. Ellen Brody still lives in the island resort town of Amity, and her sons, Sean and Michael, don't work at SeaWorld anymore. And some time ago, Ellen's husband died of a heart attack that happened because he was afraid of sharks. Sean is now a deputy in Amity. One night during the Christmas season, Sean is called to uh, untangle a log from a buoy, and when Sean goes to the buoy, he's killed by a great white. After hearing about this, Michael, who is studying to be a marine biologist, visits Amity with his wife and five-year-old daughter. While wanting to get away from Amity and spend Christmas with Michael, Carla and Thea and Ellen go to, who, what? with them to their house in the Bahamas on an airplane whose pilot is uh, Hoagie. Hoagie starts falling for Ellen Brody. Michael's friend Jake, who's also studying to be a marine biologist, lives next door. Anyone getting this? I know. If you were pitching this, I'd pass. It's horrible. Let's see. Sometime later, when Michael and Jake are out to sea, their boat is attacked by the shark that killed Sean. Michael and Jake trying to tag the shark so it can be kept track of. Sometimes le later, uh, friends are on a banana boat, a yellow-shaped thing. You've seen them uh, out there. The shark attacks a banana boat, kills a woman, leaving Thea in shock. But it looks like Thea will be okay. Carla's mad at Michael for not telling her that the shark was in the water off the Bahamas. Michael and Jake didn't mention the shark because they didn't want to upset Ellen and mess up her visit. That's too many people. Ellen believes the shark is after her family, and that was uh, trying to kill Thea instead of the woman it killed. So Ellen takes Michael's boat out to sea on a single-minded mission to find the shark and kill it, while Michael, Hoagie, and Jake try to find Ellen because they're afraid the shark will kill Ellen before Ellen can kill the shark. So her kid and her, her kid's friends, being marine biologists, are going to be in the water. What a great and, profession to choose. And she feels Jesus. that as long as they are marine biologists and being in the water, the shark is going to track them down and kill them. So her mission now is to take her own life in danger, go out in the water, kill the shark so her family is uh, safe. Is there a spoiler there? How does it end? The original is the only good one. Even Jaws 2, when Just all the boats got entangled. The and that dude uh, from Room 222 with <laughs> the afro. afro. <laughs> Just so badly wanted him not to survive, and he did. Really horrible. And, and Chief Brody had to have like a catchphrase line at the end when he held up the electric cable that the shark bit into. Mm. Like, what did he say? What was his big line at the end of that? I don't remember. Oh, that was big in the 80s to have like those those horrible lines. lines. Well, in the first one, it was smile, you son, son of, of a, a bitch. bitch. And then he shoots the tank. 
and blows the shark up. The second one was something ridiculous, like he holds the cable up and he's like, time for dinner. <laughs> or like, like, it was something ridiculous. Maybe it's in memorable quotes from uh, IMDb. It's, it's like those really awful bad. Schwarzenegger movies in the early 80s. He always had some awful joke after he killed somebody. He threw this guy into some sort of like uh, like this pipe that had all this smoke come off and went, like impaled him. And he goes, okay, let off some steam. Let off some steam. <laughs> like, uh, Anthony, was it, all right, you big bastard, I've got something for you now. Come on, open wide. Say ah. That was it. Open wide. Say ah. Like... Anyone would say that. <laughs> that was actually in the movie. Say ah. We got the ending of Jaws 3 from Jeremy in oh, Houston. Jaws 3. We're talking about Jaws 4, the I mean, Revenge. Jaws 4. Jaws 4. Uh, there, she's on a boat, and she takes like the stick on the end of the boat, I guess, that sticks out and sticks it through the shark. And Oh, like, the, the little thing that sticks out of the front of a boat? Yeah. And uh, they have uh, some, some electronic thing. She shock, it shocks him. He comes out of the water. They impale the shark, and the shark dies. And everything's fine? But did it die? Uh, apparently so, because they didn't make another one. So it died, finally. It's pretty horrible. Oh, it dies after every it one. It dies in every one. Are you worried about the hurricane? I know, but it always had babies or something. Two days yeah. ago, going on. joking about the hurricane. Yeah, we're going to day off work. It's going to be great. You know, let's have a hurricane party. And last night, it goes to Category 4. It was like, oh, I'm going to Austin. I'm going to Dallas. I'm not staying. So. Everyone's yeah. leaving. It's going to be ugly, bro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Me? Um, if it turns out Category 5, I'm booking because I'm just north of the city. Faggot. Uh, <laughs> fucking pussy. <laughs> Hang out. Yeah, right. It's in my front porch. and. Yeah. How, f- how far away is the ocean from Houston, though? Um, From where I live, it's about an hour and 45-minute drive. Yeah. I, uh, stop. They said if it's a Category Five, whatever, like seventy mile per hour winds will make it all the way to me, and that's Ooh. a little too much for me. Seventy? Seventy? It's nothing. You can handle seventy? Seventy? Wake up in my car in my living room? Nah, not with seventy. <laughs> what are y'all on that hybrid? <laughs> <laughs> this Steve's car. <laughs> it's made of paper mache. <laughs> all right, Jeremy. I'm punching out. All right, thank you. Speaking of hybrid cars, I, I could, I could, I could do what we were doing yesterday and clean up the area. I still have some stuff we got to get through here. Uh, do we have any older stuff? Uh, I like how we were cleaning stuff up from yesterday, and we played something we had played the day before. <laughs> what was it? I don't know what it was. Well, we have the deep throw clips. Hmm. But we what are those? Well, just clips from the movie Deep Throat. Yeah. Remember yeah. We, how stupid the dialogue was? So oh we decided yeah. To get some that of sucked the... though. Yeah. We hit, well we have the rocker. We did that already though. Mm hmm. We have. Uh, uh, TV edits from the Blues Brothers we never got to. Oh, I like TV edits. We have Mumbles Menino. That's Mayor fun Menino. too, okay. Now we're talking. We've got a couple things here. Little Marky, Jesus put the stars in the sky. I don't think we ever played this. No, we haven't played a Little Marky in a long time. We could start with Little Marky. And that would clean up this area very nicely. You want to hear an annoying voice. You, you want to explain to Bill Burr what Little Marky is about? Little Marky. They're these little, um, I don't know what you'd call them, little audio vignettes, little plays. Uh, it's m- a little marky, and uh, it's very Catholic church oriented. Teaches the Christian kids. Yeah, teaches them a life, life about about parents that drink, and how you know they have to stop in order to raise their kids. Okay. Uh, teaches them about the evils of abortion. We played one little marky and. Uh, it's uh, little Marky actually in the womb, and he's talking about how wonderful it is that he's growing, and how uh, through the whole thing he keeps talking about how he can't wait to meet and kiss his mommy, and he hears his mommy's heartbeat and feels the warmth of her love inside, and then and he gives like dates. He goes November 25th. Um, uh, my eyes are, are are forming. That's amazing I, how this kid can already speak. Yeah, he's talking in the talk- womb. Wait, did you did you give the punchline? No. Up? Oh, we should just play it then, because we have a whole bunch of new uh, listeners. Okay, go One ahead. Of, no, because then Bill could be shocked like everyone else, yeah. and then we can play the uh, the new little Marky. Yeah. Okay. Can play we the, find play, that? play that little Marky. By the I way, someone has met a lot of people are mentioning on the instant feedback as they find that clip that at the end of Jaws four when they kill the shark that yeah. he makes a noise like T Rex. Really. 
Is that true? Lame. Like That's hilarious. I bet it is. Yeah. Ah! Like, a... like he screamed or something. Like he was in pain. Flapping around on the front of the boat. That's yep. what we do. Let's get Eric in here. Eric. Eric is gonna find. Uh... Oh wow! They can't. They can't play Eric's music. Why can't they play Eric's oh, he's music? He's got this new thing where he runs for in. A clip. Oh really? That was the only reason. He runs in and tries to beat his music. Got it? Oh, look at you. This oh. better be the right one. And there goes Eric. All right, yeah, that's the one. Ten, ten. All right, listen to this. Hit it. Uh, Can you imagine being in like the 17th take of that? <laughs> just the bass player just going, I'm going to fucking kill myself. <laughs> the engineer. Yeah. yeah. Gonna run through it. You first started playing, you thought you were going to be playing like Madison Square Garden. It's like I had a tryout with Motley, it is. Motley Hatchet a once. Big, big house. Oof. Jesus. All right. It sounded like a uh, thing for the Koresh Ranch down there. Oh, that was awful. Jimmy. Hi, guys. Hey. Jimmy What's Norton. Up, Jim? Hello. How are you? Very tired. I'm just waking up. It's Jimmy Norton. Are you guys are going to Little Marky stuff? Yeah, we were playing with some old <laughs> Little Marky. Well, Rich Voss and uh, Bonnie were supposed to come in today and give us a fine hour of radio. They blew us off, so uh, we're stuck playing Little Marky stuff. I'm a dump sitting in a rectum. Hopefully, in a few hours, I'll land in a toilet bowl that'll gently bring me down into the sewer system. 10 a.m. <laughs> I fell on Jimmy Norton's chest. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was actually the tape for a second. That was pretty good. When did you do that? <laughs> you got to hear Anthony's new Tara Reid impression, man. Yeah, I got to hear it again in order to run. Yeah, I know. No, I, it's I, one of those that'll take a while. I'm not putting you on the spot. Uh, yeah. Listen on the replay, Jimmy, to the Tara Reid impression. It's pretty funny. I'd like I could see it turning into Joan Rivers. I don't have my Wi-Fi because it's in a box in my manager's office. Oh, really? I'm still living in a hotel. Yeah, What's I, her uh, name? Wah, wah, wah. Oh, cut it out. Stop it. How was uh, Rich Voss's wedding? Oh, it was really a classy affair. Yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was uh, really, really nice. Um, up in uh, Canada, it was really convenient. You know, uh, nine hours on a plane I spent. <laughs> Are you kidding? Nine hours. It was a six-hour flight. Uh, I had to go through Minneapolis. Because I was going on, 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 on uh, Northwest. And we get up there, and uh, there, it's in a motel. It's, got, it's a really nice motel. It's a hunting lodge motel. <laughs> That's where the wedding was? Yeah, yeah, really nice. And um, <laughs> really it was nice. a giant uh, stuffed buffalo in the lobby. And um, <laughs> it was not really, really nice. Oh, and then we, we took our family, the wedding pictures uh, behind a rest area. In Canada, all the wedding photos were taken behind a rest area. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. It was behind a rest area. His, family, his wedding photos were taken, and uh, yeah, it's really, it nice. Wow, they really uh, spared no expense. Is, it, it, is this just a small town in Canada in the middle of nowhere? Or? It, it, it was oh, it was a rest area. We took, <laughs> it was a fucking rest. Come guys on. went there to piss and shit, and then get back in their trucks and leave. <laughs> He's standing behind it on the most important day of his life. <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a picnic table. <laughs> wow, hold on a minute. He's calling in now. Uh, Rich. Here's, here's the thing. Norton was scared to take the pictures there because you're scared somebody would recognize him. <laughs> Coming out of the rest area. First of all, it was the pictures came out beautiful. Wait till you see them. Uh, okay. that's, that's one. It was just because they were using a big green patch of grass. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the area. Was it know. a rest area? Yeah. I think it was. You think we it was? It. What do you mean you think? Of course it was. Well, you, you know what? Like all those little maps of like what, like when you get into a place, those little welcome maps, and then there was a uh, men's room and a ladies' room. That was it. It was a little well, well, Catered by Sparrows. The, 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 photographer, <laughs> the photographer said, meet, us, meet me at this spot. You know, she knew where there was a good spot to take the pictures. You can't tell. I mean, when you look in at between the exit eight and exit <laughs> yeah, nine, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Tiger's just looking for any patch of grass. <laughs> <laughs> they were on a medium strip. <laughs> you know, and and uh, what do you call it? Then after the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the rehearsal dinner. I had to drive Norton around for like, you know, an hour trying to find him a down pillow. You know, he said he could only sleep on a down pillow or a black penis. And we couldn't find either of them. For an hour, we drove her. 
<laughs> that was a good line. You know what? You can kiss my ass. That was a good line. Oh, it wasn't. Well, and I and I really appreciate it. Norton gave a great speech at the wedding. It was hilarious. And we would be hearing it if you came in today to, to the show. I will. I didn't get in from 5 o'clock till 5 o'clock from the wedding party, you know, the reception I threw last night. You know, you guys all got your invitations. I and called you and said, I don't know if I can make it. There's no because way. Because I can't, like you, oversleep and not show up. Oh, well, but here. You were supposed to be here at 8 o'clock. We're, we're pulling shit out of our ass now. Well, but here. Looking stupid on our I'm, radio show because we were counting on our friend Rich Voss. Stood up by Voss. And his new wife, Bonnie. We, and we were playing on coming We're in. playing we, little Marky Cliff. We're <laughs> fucked because of you. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes, it's a slow news day. We thought, all right, Rich Boss, he'll give us an hour. He's usually really good. And Talked we had we would hurricane had, for four hours. Yeah, how much hurricane news do you need on this show? And uh, we, we, Voss, don't you have tapes of, like, uh, the toast and everything? I have a video that has to be, like, transferred. It's on a cassette or something. Oh, boy, Mr. Technology, <laughs> here you he know, is. You know, like the video cassettes or whatever they are. Not the, it's not like a big one. Or it's a, on like, Betamax. I don't know what the hell it's on. <laughs> I don't know what the hell <laughs> The pictures were taken behind a rest area. They're really nice. I pictures. have a kinescope of my <laughs> wedding. Uh, Bo Bonnie's family is, is a bunch of alcoholics. <laughs> one of her uncles, they call him Drunkle, he shit himself during the wedding. <laughs> he shit, <laughs> really? Yes, and he went back to the room and changed, but he didn't clean up. He just came back with new clothes. <laughs> oh. <at> the <laughs> right? <laughs> at the wedding. How? Uh, like, I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, these are drunken farmers. Uh, you know, the bar was supposed to close at, the bar was supposed to close at 1 o'clock. You know, we went back to our room after the wedding at like 12.30, and the bar was supposed to close at 1, and I'm sitting in my room at 1 o'clock going, I should go down there and check. The next day we find out they stayed there till 2.30 drinking the liquor, you know, uh, and, 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 and like one of the gift cards, you know, you get, you know, thank you from Tom and Mary and the four kids, two towels, thank you, you know, and they just drink them. towels? Yeah. yeah. But they don't have any money. They're oh, no cash envelopes? No, please, ask Billy. Uh... You know, it's just, they're poor, though. They're fine. All right, slow down. What does S. Billy mean? Oh, he came last night. He had a good time. Where's Biz? I left there? in like seven minutes. There was like 38 people there. It was, no, it got up to about 100. Including the wait staff. Is it true that you had a red carpet last night? Cal has put a little red carpet out front. It was about yeah. two feet long. Guess, it looked like a bath mat. It's the red bath <laughs> mat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we, I think they, they fixed it up nice. Cowlands did a great job. Well, we got to explain because Rich Voss got married in the middle of uh, nowhere in Canada. You had a little post wedding party here in New York for all your friends at Caroline's. Yeah. Caroline's. And, and, and had a little red carpet out front. You couldn't walk the red carpet. Was it stand the red carpet? What's that? Was that all you could do? Was stand the red carpet? I hear it was very, very small, Rich. <laughs> Listen, I didn't put it out there. It was a little red carpet. That led to Billy's pilot that failed, and you know, and I got a party in L.A. too. He's just lashing out at me. Cause he really is. I don't know, well, what's, I don't know what's going on. Why are you lashing out at Billy? At least he they showed had up a today. Little bath mat, red carpet, and there was one photographer with well, a disposable camera. Oh. That was the paparazzi at his big <laughs> wedding <laughs> fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not lashing at him. He's, he, he said there was 38 people. It was like it was a room people. full of middle acts oh, I don't care. <laughs> trying I don't to get care. opening work. <laughs> okay, Patrice was there. Keith was there. It was pretty good. It was you know like 100 people. Oh. Caroline's did a great affair. So what Norton, what else about the wedding comes I to mind? I, I don't know. I feel bad, Rich. I thought you made more money than that. Actually, I feel bad. Do you have a lot of expenses? I mean, how much did it cost to rent that little patch of grass at the way station? <laughs> 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 tell, <laughs> tell him about your nice present. Uh, uh, it was, it was, he got me a nice. He got me a really nice watch. I didn't know you're supposed to get the best man a gift, but apparently you are. Yeah, that like, seems to be the thing that I do. Yeah, it was a you know, like, I guess it's, I guess it's a custom, but he gave me a really really nice watch, which I wore last night very proudly. Well, thank the Oscar gift basket. Uh, yeah, no, no one thought you paid for it. They figured <laughs> that either your friend's a mortician or you found it somewhere. Moss, <laughs> Moss has been living off his gift basket for the last what? When were the Oscars? Like two years ago at this no, point? We're, we're going to Hawaii on, on, on the honeymoon. He got this amazing gift uh, basket. 
Yeah. I, I even got uh, to partake a little bit because Rich took us all out for steak dinner. That was part of the gift basket. Oh, yep. and he's pulling out his coupons oh, yeah. for the thing. And, and uh, you know what? what? It didn't cover the whole thing? No, it cost me another $1,500 because of Patrice. Oh, uh, uh, Morton? Yeah. yeah he, Morton. Ate the, he ate the left side of the menu, the <laughs> animal. <laughs> And then, uh, and then the obviously the watch was part of the gift basket. Your honeymoon is in Hawaii, I guess, and yeah. that's part of the gift basket. Well, what am I going to do? I got a, a night. I got uh, six nights in Hawaii at two thousand a night. The room is, of course, I'm going to take. But it. no days, so we got to leave during <laughs> daylight hours. <laughs> 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 the hotel I'm staying in now, I'm staying in the nicest hotel in New York. 6 a.m. every day, they're going to fly back to the mainland. <laughs> yeah, not, not allowed. <laughs> Get off. That, that would be uh, in typical Voss fashion. Where, what what uh, nice hotel are you staying at? Yeah, I'm going to tell you guys with your animal listeners so the, they can call The W? Oh, because they're all going to just blow off work so they can bother Rich Voss today. No. You're either at the W... No, the W isn't the nicest. I stayed there from the Oscar basket already. Uh, I already <laughs> stayed at the W. Yeah. Oh, where are you staying? Uh, the uh, uh, Four Seasons. No, oh, that's a that's, that's a ghetto hotel. Ghetto hotel, the Four Seasons. Yeah. Uh, I'm staying has down pillows. The uh, Saint Regis. No. Oh, um, you pause though. Yeah, it's the Saint Regis. It's the Saint Regis. No, I, I'll tell you off the air, but uh, first, uh, 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 it, uh, it's beautiful, and we have a party in L.A. to throw too. All right, Rich, Rich. October, October second. He's throwing these parties on all kinds of cities: Canada, New York, well, L.A. Yeah, because I don't expect people to fly across. I went to Ralphie's wedding. Okay, I flew in to go to Ralphie's wedding. Me and Bonnie, you know, and it's an inconvenience to make people fly across the country or to Canada. So I figured I'd throw a party on each coast and in Canada. You know, being a little considerate. And tonight. only, only uh, inconveniencing uh, Jimmy Norton. Well, you know what. But, you know, you're right. <laughs> one person. Well, you know what? It was, really, it was a really nice part of being there. Was, uh, we were, I, was, I got to the airport, and then we're trying to find this uh, the, the dinner. I went right to the dinner. They had, like, a rehearsal dinner the night before. And this dummy, they're talking on the phone, and, and we're looking for Calgary Road. And he's like, okay, we got to go to Calgary Road. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm like, dude. How old are you? Haggle-ry. I, I, I forgot my uh, my divorce dec decree, and like I get off the plane, and Bonnie goes, "Do you have your divorce decree?" I go, "I don't know, I don't have it." She goes, "Well, we can't get married." And then I finally had somebody bring it up, but I called the the, the licensing place. I go, "I forgot my divorce degree. And they Degree. Just, yeah. <laughs> like you he know, earned it. He went, he went to divorce college. <laughs> he graduated from failed marriage you. <laughs> what, what, what do you need a decree for? To prove your divorce so you can get a new license. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know that. I never was remarried, you know. I didn't know that. My ex-wife. Rich. What? You were, what a, body looked great. I mean, the, the, everyone was very nice. The people were all nice. And what a nervous idiot you were. You were a nervous. <laughs> Instead of saying I do, I said yes. Yeah, he just blurted out yes. You it did. Was, it was, dude, you did Woodstock in front of 100,000 people. This is just, this is 70 drunks. Can you relax? <laughs> really? Do you take this woman? And he said yes. Yeah. yeah, it was it was the most unromantic thing I've ever heard anybody say. <laughs> you take this woman, you bet I do. He, he fucked up a line at his wedding, just like those movies we watched. How many times did they have to stop the ceremony so he could have a cigarette? I, I, I led the wedding party with a cigarette, leaving the wedding. Dude, he smoked on the way from the wedding thing, from the from the rece from the thing into the reception, which is about ninety feet. He fucking lit a cigarette, just addict. <laughs> And, it was, and the wedding pictures were at a rest stop. That's, that's wonderful. Yep, in a rest area. Smile. Oh. <laughs> they came out really good. Wait till you see them. Did you have a DJ or a band? A DJ. He was brutal. Like, people would go up and request songs, and he'd go, no. He would say no to the wedding party. Yeah, he really, he really was kind of a, a douche. <laughs> Why was he saying no? I don't know. He just wanted to play what he wanted to play. Like, I didn't know that till the next day. You know, people don't tell you this because I would have went up and said, look, you play what we pay you to play. You know? Tough Ooh, guy. Yeah. That's how, that's, how, the gauntlet. that's how I roll. What songs did he say no to? 
I don't like, you know, there was some old people, they wanted to waltz, do some waltzes. Paperback writer. Uh, uh, no. You know, I like that song. That's my favorite song. He should have said no. Did yeah, they, I know, he said no. Did they play the paperback writer when uh, you had to walk out uh, in church <laughs> to get married? <laughs> <laughs> they play, they play like the theme for the bride, dun, 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 and then bringing uh, to the pulpit. Let's have a big hand. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I got to tell you a story. Uh, uh, you know, Norton gave a speech really funny. So a couple of people, that, then Bonnie and I went up, right? And she went first, but we were supposed to go together. And she started, and she started getting some laughs, and you know, thanking people, getting laughs. And then I went up. And I started doing pretty well, and I stepped on a couple of other lines. So during our first dance, you know, when they, they had the bride and groom had the first dance, she's going, why didn't you step on my lines? And she's arguing about her set at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> she's arguing to me as I'm doing our first dance. She's going, you know, I was doing fine, and you had to come up and steal the thunder. I'm going, this is our first dance. It's a pretty good story. They were going to write their own vows, but Rich hasn't written anything new in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you do that with a bullhorn to sound like Mike Tyson doing it? Uh, uh, they were going to write their own files, but Rich hasn't written anything new in 10 years. Yeah, fucko. <laughs> so, uh, uh-huh. I hate this state. I really hate being out there. <laughs> you got to get home. All right, well, we want to hear the audio of the speeches there, Rich. Yep. I'll get you. I'll get them to you. I'll come. You know what? I'll, I'll come by there. What time are you there till today? <laughs> You're kidding, we, right? We got uh, we got ten minutes left. No, I mean, do you hang out to do post production? Oh yeah, we have ten minutes left. Oh. Dude, they do a tremendous amount. Like they do a lot of reads and stuff. Like they'll give Anthony something to read, and he'll actually read it from the studio to the elevator. Yeah. So Steve has to follow him with a tape recorder and just hope they get the audio. You ever watch the Roadrunner? Yeah. You ever watch the Roadrunner? You ever see that curly cue of smoke that he leaves? That's in the uh, lobby at 11.01. Oh. Uh, is, does Steve stay there? Yeah, he, he'll be here. Till what time? Uh, till at least noon, 1 o'clock. Stopping in, Mc, stop, stop in McDonald's was nice, though, by the way. <laughs> uh, on the way from, from the wedding photos back to the actual what ceremony. Was, it, was, it was a nice wedding up there. My, uh, I, 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 can't, uh, I can't laugh at anything because my wedding... I actually stopped at an OTB to make a bet on the Preakness that was uh, going off that day. Yeah, in my little suit I just got married in. There's my my lovely bride in her little bridal outfit. And there we are in OTB placing a bet on the Preakness. Well, at least during your wedding photos... You weren't standing behind a bathroom stall where some guy was blown another guy from a little <laughs> hole he had drilled. <laughs> Most unromantic location fucking ever for wedding photos. <laughs> really? There shouldn't be a glory hole within, I don't know, ten miles of where you yeah, have your uh, wedding pictures miles. taken. Dude, smile. All right, just wait for those truck passes. All right, pass. Hey, I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to come down there. I'm going to try to come down there and meet Steve before he leaves. You know, yeah. we, I'm sorry. I didn't hear my alarm. We, we got in at like 5.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock. You know, you know these things happen. You know, uh, yeah. Well, get alone with your new bride, a hotel room, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got to get a little right. Sure. And then we got to go fly to L.A. tomorrow morning and a bunch of places, you know. Are you guys going to have a kid? Uh, I don't know. It depends. I mean, I'm I'm dropping loads, and we'll see what happens. Oh, wow! <laughs> wow! There you have it, guys. Jesus an exclusive. <laughs> Rich How come every it? other show that is answered? Well, we'll see what happens. Right. Are you trying? Well, well you know, no. we're, I'm dropping loads, in her. <laughs> Never hear that on Oprah. Never. Poor Bonnie, those little low self-esteem seeds finding their way in. <laughs> <laughs> looking Look, around nervously. They're looking for down pillows. I'm looking for the egg, but it's dodging me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy a fallopian tube? <laughs> I see uh, 
some photoshops that are going to be great tonight on Black Bag. <laughs> sperm with teeth. Oh, my God, right? The sperm, the only sperm cells with a tan. <laughs> the only sperm cells drooling. What did I bring it right down to that one? Oh, oh. You know what? You know what? If, if you guys would have said it, you'd be all laughing and giggling. No, and not at that. Cool. The crash would have happened. Uh... So oh, Rich, well, I wish you guys could have came last night. It was yeah, nice. it would have been great. So, yeah. Rich, uh, what time are you showing up today? <laughs> oh, what, 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 what's that? He's at the uh, Mandarin Hotel. Oh, hi. oh, hey, Jimmy. Hi, guys. We hung up on him. Uh, did you? I was just about to get him too. Oh, good. Okay. Ask your questions. All right. Well, I guess it's, I got to. I got to get out of here. Like, how, how, how are things going there, Jimmy? Great, man. I mean, um, the rehearsals have been great so far, and uh, you know. Today we got our first read for HBO, like our first like actual dress rehearsal in front of HBO, so we'll see. Are you doing good? good? Yeah, I'm actually doing well. I mean, you'd be surprised. The first table read was great, and uh, the run-throughs have been great, and, uh, you know. Well, really you haven't done any of that yet. Hey, how you doing? I'm the neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get a hooker up there at the reception? <laughs> no, I got you nothing. already had a rest area. I got nothing up there, dude. I I just I didn't even think it jerked off. I think I was just so I couldn't get internet service in the one room, so I made them move me to another room. And apparently, one person got attacked by bed bugs when they were up there. So I, yeah, it was really frightening. But uh, the ceremony was nice, and the family was nice. That's good. I was hit on one of Bonnie's high school friends. I thought I had a shot, but she had some cock blocking husband there. But yeah, so you had a shot. Oh. Uh. Well, I gotta, I gotta run. I gotta be over there. But uh, all right, when are you um, starting to film? Uh, we start. We shoot Thursday and Friday. It's a two night shoot. Uh, anybody that wants to come see it, I've gotten a lot of emails from people. By the way, there's a nice contingency of Opie Anthony fans out here. I did a spot at the Laugh Factory last night, and uh, when they mentioned Opie and Anthony, it was surprising. Many people in the audience were actually like fans of the show. It was nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, it was really nice to see, man. It's like fucking cropping up everywhere. It's a creepy little program. It's uh, <laughs> it's definitely growing. Yeah, man, but I mean, nice. I mean, I've never seen that before in L.A. You know, obviously, we weren't on the floor. Right. And uh, it, was, it was just nice to see. Cool. And so if anybody wants to come to tapings, whatever, I don't know how you do it, but it's Thursday and Friday on uh, Hollywood Center Studios. All right. All right, Jimmy. Good luck to you, buddy. All right, guys. I'll talk to you uh, early next week. All right. Yes. Take it easy, man. Stay in touch. All right. All right, Bill. Take care. All see you. Right. Bye. There goes Jim Norton in Hollywood mm. being a star. So awkward having, like... One chick on the phone and the other chick right here in the studio. And <laughs> being cordial. Yeah, being cordial to each other, but, you know, eh, you know, banging's going on. Yeah. yeah. I know I'm the whore on the side. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to leave your wife. <laughs> Making all these promises. No, I swear, we're working on trying to, you know, get a get you the divorce. You said that on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a stand. Me or her. Storm, I'll come back crying 20 minutes later. <laughs> you fucking relate to that. Oh. Five fucking brutal days of my life. Oh. oh. Can we talk about it tomorrow? What, about me getting dumped? Yeah, why not? Oh. All right. That's a good tease for tomorrow. An awful time oh. to get dumped, too. Did you get dumped? Yeah, I did. Oh, we're all out of time. Uh, Coming yeah. up tomorrow. Tomorrow, he uses your tragedy as a tease. But what else are we going to do? It's not a tragedy. It's fucking... It's it, tragic. It, not the know. amount of times it's happened. This is like Jaws 4 for me. It's like is the, it really? The first one was the most amazing one. I already know. I know what to do. You know? Yeah, you've been dumped a few times? No, I've always been the dumper. Yeah. And I was really thinking the other night, like, what is worse? Because mm -hmm. you have the guilt if you dump somebody, but when you get dumped, it's, uh, I don't know, you just feel like, I never am, am I guilt. a loose? You, you know, you start looking around your apartment, just closing the floor, like, you know, I'd, I'd probably break up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I really suck. I don't, I don't really bring much to the table, do I? <laughs> In my awful fucking support system of a family. I call my brother, yeah, girl walked out, blah, blah. My brother's just like, ah, I should probably want to fuck somebody else. Oh, Your thanks, brother man. actually said that? Yeah, he called back and he called back and apologized and then basically said it again. He's like, listen, dude, I just came back from the BC game. I had like 20 beers. I'm sorry. You know, I didn't mean to say that. It was a little harsh, but, you know, it's been my experience that when a woman <laughs> does something like that, it's like, great, dude, thank you. Just just forget thanks it, a man. a lot. 
Oh yeah. Oh, I was in a I'm, short-term relationship. I'm, I'm, You're with her a while, so yeah. I'm going through the awful, like you know, checking your messages 90 times a day, and then like when my phone rings, I'm trying to lessen it, like the hurt, so you just like it's not her. It's no fucking way. It's okay, and, you know, preparing yourself. Oh. And then when you pick it up and it really isn't her, your heart like drops a little bit, and then you try to overcompensate with like. Hey, how's it going? Like quiver in your voice as you. Hey, buddy, <laughs> good to hear from you. Trying to act like you're happy. Your voice just keeps going higher and higher. Happy that it's that person on the phone. Yeah, great. No, great to hear from you. What's what do you got going on? Uh, you know, oh. <laughs> going to the gym. God forbid the phone clicks like there's another call on the line. Yeah. Jump them over beep. there in a second. Oh, yeah. I got that one. You're Hang dead. on a second's a beep, and I clicked over, and it was somebody trying to fax me. I just get like this beep. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> it's bad timing, man. The HBO, sh- you know, special hits. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah like know, yes and no, but because it was like you know my my big thing is when I taped the special. I taped it back in April, so I got to I got to live that. Like I finally watched my special last night. Oh, you did. I finally said, all right, I got to stop the self loathing, sit down and watch it. And the coolest part was just, you know, seeing like the end of Bryant Gumble and then somebody else, like, you're actually a part of it. But once I started watching my set, I was like, yeah, I, I, I did it. I, yeah. I know this stuff. Yeah, it's like watching me tape a set at the stress factory. It's like, oh yeah. And then the guy yells and I go into a love. Production lull. values are good though, you know? It's not like a cheesy, you know, what I did someone's like? friend's video in the back of the room, you know? You know what I did like what they did with the special is they, they weren't cutting to, f- people laughing in the crowd every two seconds right that's yeah. the worst mm-hmm. or even like when a band's playing it's like the worst fucking thing you can do yeah oh wow look at that chick you know yeah on somebody's shoulder who gives a fuck they did like a behind you shot which was cool kind of a longer shot from the back of the stage where you could see the audience and see them reacting to it but it's not just a close-up on someone <laughs> oh yeah or if you make a joke and it has to be about somebody black then they show a black they couple show the black guy who are laughing at sinbad in like 1992 <laughs> it's just like this they do that footage. all the time how about them asians uh, and they're driving let me tell you and then there's an asian guy they gotta zoom in that's, on them. that's classic well we'll get into it a little more more tomorrow. Bill's been a trooper yeah. though. He yes, showed he up has. Monday and he was just miserable, but he still brought the funny. Yes, he did. Still brought the funny. It's a professional is what they call that. I'm like that Rich Voss. Right. Not showing up. Not showing. Paulie from Baltimore. Today I learned that vacuum that vacuum don't leave much time for hugging. Quote of the day for me. Mm-hmm. Very good. Let's uh, go to the phones, play a little bit of what did we learn on the Opie and Anthony show. It's Rob. Rob, go ahead. Hey, what's going on, guys? Happy birthday, Billy. Yeah, I learned that ancient Greeks had a potato famine. Punching out, guy. That's right. I love the new impression, Anthony. Yeah, I'll have to watch that show a little more. Paul in New York, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. I learned today that Jesus made the tools that killed little Marky. Yeah, yeah. Pete from New York, what's up? Hey, how you guys doing? I want to know, how many showers is Billy going to take today? Yeah, it was a rough show today, Billy. you got to play that clip where Billy actually backs out of doing the impression. He said, I can't do this. That was hilarious. <laughs> Can <laughs> like even realize what a fucking creep he's being? You guys rock. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to be sucked into this crazy world where we get all creepy at times. Let's go to Prozac from Whack Bag. Prozac. I learned I need more than five minutes with Russell. And I learned boss's reception was a room full of middle acts looking for work. All right. Hopefully, Russell will call the program tomorrow. Also on the show tomorrow, maybe they'll actually show up. We have uh, Big A and Stalker Patty. They got a big date tomorrow night, so we'll talk to them uh, beforehand on tomorrow's program.